Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to yet another week of Upsurge Premier League action. I'm David Seymour Robinovich, and alongside me, we've got the wonderful David, this David, David, the saved one mana, Daniel, the saved one mana. Uh, I can't believe I tripped that up, but I'm just super excited to get into some League of Legends action. I think we're going to have a really good game today. Yeah, we haven't really casted League uh, in a minute together. You know, it's been a couple of weeks, so we're excited. We're both very, very excited for this matchup we got today. Daniel, David, man, you're tripping up, but it yeah, happens. it happens. It happens. Um, we're going to be waiting to get into Pick of Man very shortly, but why don't you talk us a little bit about what you expect kind of coming into this patch yeah. um, and what kind of both teams can kind of look forward to in the draft phase. It's kind of cool because we ha we've seen a couple of changes throughout uh, patch 10.3. Nothing too, too crazy to know. I know that Aphelios is still kind of going down in the meta. Senna is still, still at the top with MF, so... You kind of see that solidified in the ball lane as well. In the support pool, nothing really has changed over there. I, you're starting to actually see a lot of Zaya Rakan as well. Uh, so you might see that just a little bit. Of course, Orn top. He's slowly crept into the meta. So you're going to see a whole lot of Orn either banned, picked. I don't. You don't really see an Orn ban, but definitely a pick. We could see that here today. Jungle pool. Very. I don't know. It's same same champions every single I've, patch, uh, of course. I was watching LCS this past yeah. weekend. I don't think they're on 10.4 just yet. I think no. it's going to be next week. Yeah. Uh, but I saw some rumblings of the infamous Corky Azir mid lane, yeah. just the classic poke back and forth. Yeah. Um, do you think we might see some of that today? Or maybe even in Ezreal, I hear that that's making a resurgence to the ball lane as well. Whenever I see patch notes about Corky, it, no matter what they change. I remember like last season at some point they buffed his attack speed by like just like point three, <laughs> And then all of a sudden just and he's like just back in the meta. pick rate. 50%. Same thing is going to happen. Uh, they buffed his W, and I think something else. can't remember what that other thing was, but definitely his W. His w damage went up by a little bit, uh, so we, we might see that here today. Of course, Azir as well. That control mage in the mid lane, definitely very annoying to face against, and uh, definitely a control e type mage uh, just to play for your team. We're going to have to see kind of what this happens throughout this pick and ban phase. Um, there's been a little bit of quality of life changes to the jungle where some of the champions have been at kind of... This jungle assistance has been added into their kit. Darius, Garen, Zed, Talon. Mm. Nar has gotten a little bit of a buff as well yeah. in the jungle. Don't think we'll see a jungle no. Nar probably <laughs> at all, if not That's ever. Scary. That might be just the quality of life for uh, yeah. kind of the lower elo uh, side of things. But we still may see kind of something that might surprise us today. 10.4, still very, very fresh, yeah. obviously. Um, but, uh, again, these two teams have been kind of going at it back and forth. In the Upsurge Premier League, I mm. do think we'll be casting Snowman, Snowman Slammers, Snowman yes. Slammers. Versus Issues Critical. Up against Issues Critical. I remember that one. Um, I think it's going to be a good match. Of course, yeah. you may have seen us casting 100 Thieves in the past few weeks, but this match, um, still one that's really highly contended. A lot of people may not know, but there are four other divisions. Yes. Uh, 100 Thieves being in the Ocean Division. Um, but that's not the one we're in today. Here we go. Starting things off with the pick and ban. The first ban going over to issue is critical, meaning they're on blue side with the first pick. And we'll see how Snowman Slammers signs to answer back. One thing I always love about casting new teams is the, to create a story over these past or these next couple of games, whether it's three or two in this best of three set. You always love to see certain players come up and really take that front four charge in their squad. So we have to watch out for these key players in particular. However, we do have a couple of bands across this board. Vagar as well as Set. Definitely two, I don't want to say two priority picks. Definitely Vagar is, is less, less priority. But a lot of players have been kind of picking them up in the bot lane a little bit. We've seen that in Twi Twitch Rivals as well. A couple of little sightings in the mid lane. Set obviously in the top lane. Uh, is an absolute dominant force. Has seen him in the jungle a little bit as well, so just take that comfort pick out. Yeah, we do see the Yumi being taken away, and that definitely had a little bit of prominence over this past weekend in the LCS, and anything that goes in the LCS seems to kind of just pop up in the regular 5v5 meta as well. The Syndra being taken away away as well very potent in the mid lane probably mm -hmm. more so in the mid lane than the 80 carry position but still very flexible in that nature the casio as well being taken away um and definitely starting to see that mid pinch pool start to kind of crumble in uh for chaos vermin and command attack we'll have to see kind of what they go for but it may not even be in the first pick phase yumi if played correctly can be an absolute dominating force same thing with syndra in the mid lane it's very uh I don't want to use the word annoying once again, but yeah, 
it's it's annoying to face <laughs> against the burst at level six, of course. Uh, Olaf in the jungle, nothing too new. And of course, we've been talking about the Orin as well here in the top lane, and it's gotten so much of a priority that it's being picked first. Really no surprise over on that front. A lot of AoE, a lot of damage. We've been talking about that Orn six second combo. Absolute amazing amounts of burst, but we got two more picks. Yeah, Senna and Graves here locked in for Snowman Slammers. We'll be looking at Eric potentially on the Graves jungle. We'll have to see how Issues Critical does answer back, but the Senna, uh, obviously not as much flexible in the AD carry position anymore. A lot of people have started to Realize that, hey, I'm going to need to play her a little bit more supportive instead of kind of the AD carry position. And we did see Cloud9 this past weekend use it to great effect with a Tom Kench ADC. <laughs> Not really Tom <laughs> Kench ADC, but kind of the supportive yeah. um, Senna for that Tom Kench. And we do see the Aphelios being picked up here. Like you said, 10.4. A couple of nerfs kind of overall, but still the kit. Very, very potent. And you're not going to really see him fall in the standings quite a bit at all. Um, but we'll have to see how Snowman Slammers answers back with this Braum locked in. It's kind of cool because you usually see Braum alongside the Senna uh, in that s a mega slow matchup. But you're talking about the Tom Kench. <clears throat> Definitely can be a huge priority with the Senna. A lot of slowing plus uh, plus Tom Kench's tongue. It just it, you know, it doesn't. <laughs> it's doesn't, just Tom Kench, you know just, what I mean? Yeah, doesn't pair up for just, a good time. Just Tom Kench. Now sure. we do see the Mordekaiser locked in here. It's going to be up against Orn in the top lane now. One thing you got to know about Orn is that even if he has a bad matchup, it's still really not that bad no. at all. He gets <laughs> insane value. Um, I think it's after level 11. He gets two items for himself, and then after that, every level after that, he gets an item for um, the rest of his team. That could be um, the Redemption item. That could be Infinity Edge. Um, that could be Death Cap. There's a lot of different ways that he gets insane value for his team. So even if he starts to fall behind in this potential matchup against Mordekaiser, you can definitely see Orn start to really turn it around for his team. Uh, which can be very, very critical. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's one way to say it, but definitely another pool I want to touch on is this jungle matchup just because we've got the Graves so far. We don't really have what issue is critical is playing, but Graves hasn't really been seen all that much. Uh, I don't want to say a new jungle champion coming into this one, right? We saw him a whole lot last season and the season before that, but definitely here in this one is he's going to be a little bit more new, uh, very aggressive to play, but you can see the snowman's snowman slammers they're very much targeting that jungle pool matchup they got the rex they got the Lee sin if you ask me what's next you got the elise still in there and that's really the only one i can kind of think of at the moment that's just really top of the meta uh but other than that snowman slammers they've really choked out that pool now the poppy being banned out here from issue is critical followed here by the nautilus i want to touch on the poppy if possible yeah with the Mordekaiser already locked in, what po what could Poppy potentially be flexed to? Could it be a support Poppy, yeah. potentially? Well, we've seen her all uh, across a lot of lanes. Like We've seen her in the top lane, obviously, mostly. Uh, we've seen her in the jungle in a couple of senses, but, it, you know, you don't really want to go Poppy jungle just because there's, you know, not a whole lot of walls. There's a, there's a couple walls in the game itself, but anyways. Yeah, you're going crazy over the Tom I'm Kench going crazy. <laughs> I predicted the Tom Kench pick. I got to pat myself on the back and obviously give Good props job, where man. props is due. <laughs> Cloud9, thank you so much for preparing me for this draft. You also predicted that. I have predicted. <laughs> wow, I'm just out here on yeah. these predictions. As you're coming out here, potentially not locked in yet. Seven no. seconds left to go on the timer. Make him look like a fool. But the Azir going to be locked in here. And honestly, a really standard comp across the board. Braum going to be there to help really defend against the Senna because she can really start to lay on the damage once she gets those souls. It can be very quite potent. And especially against the Graves, going to help out as well. But we're going to have to see what the last pick here is going to be for issues critical. And if it'll round out their comp effectively. They synergize really well so far, issue is critical. They've got this whole entire jungle. I don't. Not, not, not this whole jungle matchup. <laughs> Sorry. My brain's going crazy. Oh, oh, baby. I love to see it. Jarvan I here. I forgot the Jarvan. That's my gonna bad. Going to be locked in, and that's going to look like a peanut butter and jelly comp. Just super standard. The old go-to, go old faithful. AOE. Can't fail you. You got poke. You got disengage. You got re-engage. You got the whole shebang. Now we're going to have to wait for Snowman Slammers to really answer back because I really think what they're lacking is a little bit of magic damage. As hmm. you see, the Zig's oh. locked in. Going to be able to match some of that range here from Azir. And we'll have to see how this kind of flexes around as they start to pick in kind of where each lane goes. Because I'm starting to wonder, where where is everyone kind of respected to? Is it going to be the Mordekaiser top, Graves jungle, the Ziggs mid? Yeah. 
Tom Kench ADC, quote unquote, and then the center support? Is that kind of? I don't know. They've got the, they obviously do have a couple of options if they do uh, want to try and flex whatsoever. I think it's going to be standard, though, honestly. Like, it's very safe to say that it's just going to be Ziggs in the mid lane. It's going to be Senna. Uh, ADC, Tom Kench alongside her. I don't think the, that these teams have kind of adapted to that style of the meta yet. Right? It's kind of like LCS first, the Pro Leagues first. They, they want to try kind of these new picks, and then it kind of trickles down into the amateur scene, and this is kind of what we're seeing right here. Um, maybe if it was LCS, they could uh, do something kind of crazy, but the Graves is the one that's kind of sticking out to me as that new-ish pick. Just because we haven't really seen Graves in a minute, right? Riot nerfed Graves just to the ground, and then now he's slowly coming back up into the meta as that jungle that is very, very aggressive, as a lot of burst to a team comp, a lot of single target burst to a team comp. But I don't know if it's going to be enough for this squad. Yeah, especially against the Jarvan, who, um, with his passive, has a lot of kind of early game damage that can really come out. As he's, as the game goes on, he really just becomes an engage tool. Mm. Um but earlier on, he ha he definitely has the damage. But Graves is really the king of damage. So yeah. he, 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 yeah. You never really see a Graves tank. So they really yeah. do have some good AD damage coming in. And that's going to get layered with the Senna. That's going to be incredibly deadly. But I'm really starting to wonder if their front line is going to be capable of surviving for that long. As Mordekaiser, um, once he ults, he's out of the picture. And Tom Kench isn't going to have enough money, I think, flowing in to build the tank items necessary. Whereas Issue is Critical has literally some of the three... Probably two and a half, sorry, tankiest champions on the planet in Orn, Braum, and then the point five with Jarvan. You also got to think about where is Tom Kench going to be in a lot of these fights? Where is he going to be positioned? Of course, if he uses the Voyage, he's going to be in the forefront of the fight, maybe even off to the side. However, he's going to be with Senna, right? Most of the time, it's going to be with that Senna. Yeah. Senna's going to use her ultimate. Again, in the famous words of Double Lift, Senna just allows you to win fights just a little bit more, a little bit better, because of the amount of shield that she gives the rest of her squad when they do initially start the fight. Of course, her her damage in her auto attacks is very, very slow, so you're not really going to be seeing a whole lot of kiting potential out of this champion. It's, it, I don't know. It's, it's it's looking kind of kind of weird to me, this whole entire Snowman comp. So why don't you tell me a little bit about more as to what are the weaknesses in the draft that Snowman Slammers really showed yeah. and how you would improve this, this yeah. kind of composition and, and give it an A-plus instead of a B-minus. I did like the Senna to start it off, right? The Senna was really, really good. We know that Senna is a priority ADC. Her coming in first was great. Alongside with Graves, though, I don't know. Because usually what happens is that First pick goes to blue side. They pick a priority, and then right side has to respond with something that's two times better. They have two major priorities here in the <laughs> yeah. draft, and they only got one. Yeah, Graves is just kind of like that pocket pick, right? It's not really a counter or anything. It's like, great, you got Graves. If he ends up popping off on Graves, then I totally eat my words. Yeah. However, we know on paper that Graves isn't the absolute best champion. We look over at that other side, then they have a Felios and Braum. To, again, amazing priority ADC bot lane combo. And they were allowed to pick their bot lane here because of the Senna uh, being prioritized. What, is it, what does Snowman Slammers respond with? Mordekaiser. Yeah. Mordekaiser's okay, but it's not like, oh my god, it's a Mordekaiser. Yeah. Okay? It's, it's, it's I, I, like I also do have to comment that it seems that currently in the draft meta, not even the meta of the game, but the draft meta, is that you're looking to pick your bot lane early yeah. just so that you don't get pinched in the second half of the draft. And they and you can see that Snowman Snimers did. The Poppy's gone, which potentially could be a comfort pick here for Mag Maggie? Mag Magi? I'm, yeah, I'm not something sure like how to pronounce that. And then the Nautilus, super, super potent, especially in this situation where you're looking for a Phaleos to have a little bit of space, and that Nautilus is definitely something that removes that space, but taking it away... How are they really going to get to that back line with the Snowman Slammers comp? Are they looking to poke them out? Will they have enough damage? By the time Issue is Critical engages, they're going to be dead meat. Yeah, of course. We could talk about this Issue comp in just a little bit, but the one, last thing I want to touch on is the Ziggs pick because we haven't really got to touch on it too, too much yet. A lot of AoE coming from this champion, of course, right? It's going to be a, a huge priority in the mid lane. I definitely actually like it because pairing up versus Azir can't be a hard matchup, right? The, the soldiers kind of mess you up sometimes. So putting a equally as annoying poke into that mid lane matchup can be really, really good. Also for team fights with the uh, Mega Inferno Bomb can be really good as well uh, with a lot of AoE damage. Over on the other side, though, issue is critical. They've got 
just kind of like that golden comp, dude. <laughs> yeah. They got a they lot got of old faithful. She, you know? she never fails you. She's always there for you when you need her. Um, but one thing I really want to touch on is give me one win condition for both of these teams, yeah. right? Could they win through bot, through top? Is it dragon control? Is it rift control? What is the win condition for, for one win condition for either of these teams? Issue is critical right now. If you look at that top lane matchup, Orange just going to become Orange at the end of the day. It doesn't really matter if he ends up getting camped. doesn't matter how many times he dies. He's just going to become an absolute beast. Looking over at that, um, the jungle pool, he's... You know, an early, obviously an early game jungler, Jarvan, uh, loves to get around. You can look at the mid lane and the bot lane matchup for that one, right? Try and get some of these carries ahead for issue is critical. Over on the other side, though, Snowman Slammers, they're looking over at their graves as well as that kind of solidified early game damage. Try and get this zigs ahead if you can. It's really hard to gank in Azir. That's the only problem as well. Try and actually get this Mordekaiser ahead because the faster that Mordekaiser gets his items, the faster he can start deleting people in a lot of these fights. Now, would you say that considering the situation that Snowman Slammers has kind of put themselves in, yeah. would you kind of caution then Graves to focus more on objective control instead? If they get some of these early dragons, some of it yeah. might kind of end up benefiting them in the process. They could you know, make a run for a 20-minute soul, really, mm. if they wanted to. But obviously, Issues Critical is going to try to stop that. But if you get the lane priority... Why not? Exactly. Yeah, Graves is definitely an, an amazing jungler for taking those objectives very early on. We know how much damage he can actually do to a tower as well. So we have to watch out for where this Graves is going to be because I think it's the jungle matchup that's really going to decide this one. However, these guys can't play without keyboards. Dude. Oh, no, they can't. We got to do Kono keyboards, ladies and gentlemen. So if you're looking for, if you're looking to take <laughs> your game <laughs> to the next level, it all starts with your peripherals from keyboards to keycaps, mice, and more. Our friends over at Kono have got you covered. Kono works with the world's best designers, innovators, and makers to bring you some of the best gaming peripherals. Kono is a huge supporter of over, of us over here at Upsearch. <laughs> <laughs> and I've made generous contributions to our prize pool. If you need to find a new keyboard, then definitely check out the new Hexagears X1 RGB low-profile Bluetooth mechanical keyboard. Wow. That's a mouthful. I've never heard yeah. of a Bluetooth keyboard, though. That's kind of cool. Yeah. Definitely kind of cool. Uh, you can use the discount code UpsurgeGG for 7% off your first order. That's so 7% more than you spent. already had. That's what I'm saying, dude. 7% more than you already had. Definitely kind of crazy. Uh, for more information, head over to Kono.store to check out all, the off all of the stuff they got to offer. That's Kono.store. Oh, no, discover amazing products. Now, mouthfuls not included. The keyboards, no, however, all loaded okay. up, ready to go, ready to game. Mm. Uh, but we are actually ourselves almost ready to game ourselves. One minute probably remaining until we get into this match. Um, if you were to give a word of wisdom mm. to both of these teams, if you were the coach on the sidelines making sure little Timmy got his little Tyke Upsurge Premier League game yeah. good here today, what advice would you give them? Issue is critical. They got to just stick to their plan. Right? Okay. Just get, stick to the team fight. Don't do anything too crazy. You guys win team fights. It's it's looking like very it, – it, that's just kind of easy. Right? Just play to the win condition, and you guys are good. On the other side, though, Snowman Slammers, they got a little bit more of a mountain to climb just because – you know, they got the Graves once again. I'm just going to keep beating this dead horse because I just <laughs> don't like Graves. I don't know why. <laughs> but if this Gra Graves player can actually play them to the maximum capacity that you can actually play Graves to, hey, it's going to be kind of good. However, I don't know. I'm not too uh, reliant on it. So, we're, we listen, I don't want to call out the production team. These guys have been amazing. But I'm not sure. Has the Snowman Slammers and Issues is Critical swapped? No, they actually can't see that. They ca I can't oh, see. Oh, they can't no. see. That. Oh, only okay. we can see that. Only we can see that. Okay, oh, okay, okay, okay. Not too shabby. These guys see our beautiful faces. Yeah. This okay. Whole time. All right. All right. All right. We'll have to see once we load up onto the rift. But I am super excited to see both of these teams go head to head mm -hmm. in this best of three as we load up onto the rift. The moment Woo! you have all been waiting for. Graves in the jungle up against the Jarvan. Who will take this victory? With Jarvan here poised to potentially get some scouting information out. They did see Jarvan walk on over with that ward. But a regular standard fan out here. Mm. The entire roster here. Ooh, Jarvan. Catches Uncle Derry with his son Chaos Vermin. Just hanging around mm. on the porch side. Whether the early invade spawned. potentially going to be coming out here as they're trying to 
have a little bit of a tussle in the river. Yeah, I kind of like what these, uh, what this little tussle has to offer as well. Snowman Slammers, they're just trying to defend the actual invade itself. I really do like that they were doing that because you could you could see that issue is critical. We're looking for it. They were looking for some sort of an invade there onto the red buff. Would have been very huge. Uh, just because Graves needs all of the, I don't want to say the help that he can get, but hey, you're a jungler, you need your buffs. Yeah, it looks like he's going to have a little bit of a solo start here, and I think that's actually the correct call, trying to not really show issue is critical, where Eric Z. Yang is, is currently out, and he's actually going to take this leash around town as Grom just stands by to watch. Grom and Aphelios going to start things off here. Tom Kench CSing for his dear life. Going to be a little bit rough, but melee matchup definitely going to benefit here, him here in the bot lane. Mm. Yeah, definitely a very standard start here in the bot lane itself. I like the little poke that's been going back and forth. Of course, I like how the Braum was just staying beside the Aphelios just to proc the Guardian just for a couple of seconds just so that you can get a little bit of damage off. You can kind of see that take into corruption. However, Senna, Tom, love to just push in the wave as fast as possible. Of course, they didn't have to help the, the uh, their jungler to get a little bit of an advantage down there for themselves. I don't know if this is kind of wrong, but it looks like Tom Kench has like all the CS now. Yeah, oh, no, it is Tom Kench It is. Yeah, oh. like I said, uh, you, you, it sounded like a meme, but it really is. Okay, okay. And really what this pick does is this allows Senna to go full swing into soul stacking. Every single minion that Tom Kench is getting, well, I'm not exactly sure how Senna works with what's, what, what souls are dropped from what minions, mm. but if Senna actually went ADC, she actually gets less souls per minute, and this allows her to get like 50 in 10 minutes, which is quite efficient here. So they're actually looking to get ganked by the J4. Flash is available, but it looks like they're going to get stunned up here by the Braum. Mm. Tom Kench chews up the Senna, and now she's on the run as Tom Kench dies. The Root actually oh. coming out here as well, and the Flash from Aphelios will secure first blood as Tom Kench falls under the turret. Even though the Jarvan messed up just a little bit, it really didn't matter at the end of the day. They could have got the double kill. But it's still, the redemption coming in from Aphelios was really, really good. Let's take a look at that re replay just to see what Jarvan ended up doing there on that gank. Immediately ends up putting his flag down, and nothing really else kind of came from that. He could have held it, waited for the flash from Senna, and then it would have been a little bit more effective. Really good route as well coming from the Senna just to force the flash out of the Aphelios. At the end of the day, he ended up getting first blood, which is really good for himself. However, we see here in the mid lane, Ray is kind of lurking on the left-hand side. I don't know if he wants to be going for this just yet. Yeah, definitely going to be a little bit of a brutal start here for the bot lane. A lot of summoners burned, whereas Aphelio still really only has his heal, which is going to be very convenient. But Zir being pushed in here with Graves looking to potentially swing on by. But the priority going to just reset the wave. Zig's going to back. Maybe he has enough money for maybe an amp tome or something like that. Not really a whole lot that he can buy. The Mana Crystal coming out here as well. Going to be a little bit of a reset, but the junglers might meet in the river here on the top side. As they're just clearing their camps. Yeah. The only, re only really thing that I see out of Graves is that he ended up going into his Krug. What's good is that he actually has his Raptors coming up very soon so that he can reset the timers on his red side jungle. Keep them in synergy is usually what you want to do as a jungler. So that once you finish your Krugs, your Raptors are coming up literally immediately. Same thing for your blue side jungle. Got to watch out for that, definitely. Uh, but I do also like how Graves is prioritizing his top side jungle, just so that he can provide a little bit more focus towards his bot side. Of course, Dragon just came up. He hasn't gone back to base yet. If he wants to go back here and then reset for his blue jungle, then he might be able to hover around that bot side, maybe look for a kill, maybe even just look for a Dragon itself. Really appreciate this kind of play here from Snowman Slammers. And a beautiful vision line, a crescent, a croissant? A crescent? Ooh. I don't even know what I'm saying a anymore. A crescent, there, there it go. is. I've been mixing up everything, but hopefully the sauce is the only thing I don't want to get mixed up here. But a beautiful crescent coming out across the dragon pit. It has mm. been kind of spotted out here by the vision ward, um, but still nonetheless, they're able to track Jar Jarvan moving through this bot side jungle which will potentially give them the opportunity for first dragon, but still the ward 
might see what happens. But the priority here in the ball lane in the mid lane is going to be key to get this dragon. Yeah, it could be definitely huge. Of course, the mountain being the first one means that there is no mountain as the main soul. Which is, I don't want to say detrimental, but it opens up a couple of options for those other dragons. But I do like how Graves kind of followed my uh, words of wisdom as he ended up going into his blue side jungle. He's starting to set up for this dragon itself as well. Command attack, kind of going a little bit aggressive, but it doesn't matter. Graves says, I don't really care. I'm going for this dragon. Yeah, J4 backed in an unfortunate timing, cleared his bot side. The vision was able to spot that out. They just start the. Dragon here for free. Unfortunately, bot side doesn't have priority. Mid does, which is mm. good. That bot side's gonna be a little bit rough as Jarvan is starting to make his way over, but I don't think he'll be there in time. No. The dragon will go over to Snowman Slammers, which again we talked about in the early kind of timing here with the pick and ban, but the bot lane decides oh, to answer there. the route. Gonna be coming out here from Senna. The dragon secured, but Jarvan, he's gonna be looking to cook up here. Four members down in the bot side. Tom Kench is in trouble, pops the bubble, but it won't be enough as Orin TP's down, takes out the Senna, and now Tom Kench trying to find mercy in the alcove, but Azir says not today and takes him down. Definitely very weird coming through with this play, just because the mountain dragon was taken, which was really good coming out of Graves. Only problem is that maybe he was asking for help or maybe the bot lane thought that they had some sort of uh, a duty to do down here because he, they ended up walking into the river really with no HP. I want to see how much HP they were on with this replay here just because, I don't know, it, it confused me a little bit, the, the whole positioning on this one. But yeah, okay, so they were all on a kind of half. Aphelios with his, uh, with his flame, his flaming... Uh, weapon came through <laughs> and which is a little bit too much damage for this bot lane to to kind of recover from right definitely not the best scenario to find yourselves in of course the Orin coming in with the TV TP just to solidify that kill was really good as well because it gave himself a kill going back into the top lane with a negatron cloak is so good versus more Kaiser we're gonna see Six here are going to be pushing out the way. One thing I really wanted to touch on during that dragon fight is it's super key that there was kind of the wave just met right in the middle of that mid lane. Allowed Azir, he didn't get the priority. He just ran straight down to that bot side, which ultimately partnered with the Orn TP. Allowed for a 5v2. And Ziggs kind of left scrambling, waddling through the river, trying to get down there, but really... Just ends up using his ult. Here's going to be Orn using his ult, looking for the Mordekaiser, doing an insane amount of damage. Wow. That's going to be the double knockup. Now here comes the ult. He's going to be pulling Orn closer to him. Graves is here to start the party as well. Cataclysm comes out. That's going to be the flag and drag combo as Jarvan cleans up off the <laughs> table. Now Orn's in a little bit of trouble. Ziggs roams down. The flash comes out. Here's the oh. Kobe. It's not enough. But Graves jumps over the side and takes out Orn in the process. Definitely really good. One for one coming through at the end of the day there. It took a little bit long to actually eliminate the Mordekaiser because of his ultimate there. But Jarvan just said, screw this, I'm going back. I'm, I'm leaving. <laughs> he did not want anything to do with that fight over there. So we just ran over to uh, Graves' red side jungle. Really good response as well coming in from Graves just to keep his objective mindset up. He's just allowed himself to take the Rift Herald. However, you do see that there is the Azir walking up. Is it going to stop him, though? Yeah, still the vision is available. Scuttle in control. Ziggs is here as well, strangely so, in the top lane. Jarvan's going to be coming out here as well. The flash does come out. He does take the Rift, takes his life as well. Senna, the ulti, not going to be enough to keep her comrade alive. And now Ziggs waddling away, trying to make his way out. Satchel not going to be ready. The flash will, though. And now going to try to take Jarvan here as well, but not going to be enough as the Ultra Mega Death Bomb. Going to keep Jarvan just a little bit healthy. Not enough damage, really, to take him out. And I think so far, although Snowman Slammers has taken quite a lot of objectives, the Dragon, the Rift, yeah. a lot of kill pressure going over from Issue is critical. And it's really that PB and J comp. They're just so solid, all well-rounded, and able to roam on when need be. Orn going back, getting the catalyst. You could see that Jarvan as well finishing his main jungle item. 2-0 and 4 on this champion. Azir slowly building towards Nasher's Tooth as well. You could see that Aphelios, he's got the BF sword. This whole entire comp is exactly where they need to be at 10 minutes. Just need a little bit more time in order to get their main priority items. Again, Azir going back to base, getting a Fetish Codex for himself. These guys are all just sitting in the spot where they need to be. Graves, though, I do have to commend him for his die-hard 
um, yeah. desire to take some of these objectives now, pushing in that mid lane, trying to open up the map a little bit more. And I think it's going to be a smart idea, especially with Ziggs able to help control this mid lane. But Jarvan, he's looking to cook up here as well. He's going to get a couple of autos off. Tom Kent joins the fray as well with Senna. And now they're going to focus their attention onto this mid lane turret. Jarvan looking to re-engage potentially. Braum joining the fray as well. Aphelios not here though. And a 4v3, Aram in the middle with Rift Herald falling unfortunately, but still two plates left on this mid lane turret. I did like how Tom Kench just came in there. Even though he was right beside that tier one tower uh, in the mid lane, he was just able to use the Abyssal Voice just to get into the fight for that mental pressure, right? Don't engage enemy team because I am here with Senna. And that's all it really came down to. It's why Jarvan didn't end up going in there. Definitely really good over on that front. And of course, the dragon going to be spawning. It's going to be that infernal dragon. So you know both teams want it, but Jarvan's got his priority in the top lane. Ooh, Mordecai is in a little bit of trouble here, but Jarvan showing top is going to give Graves the opportunity. You can see the flag and drag combo into the male hairy sprint down the river, trying to get here as fast as possible. But there's going to be three members here on the dragon and their control of objectives. They're always here on time, ready to go. And now two dragons deep. The ocean comes Huge. to life. Just keep playing around that if you're Snowman Slammers. They know that the comp that they have isn't really that great in the early game. Just wait for the main priority items to come out. Ziggs almost has his loot in. It's absolutely huge. You can see in the bot lane here, though, that Senna is just Senna. He's going to allow them to get out. <laughs> but still, you got to just wait for that point. Yeah, they, and I really kind of respect both teams for playing around their wing conditions. This yeah. is something that you never, rarely ever get to see. Usually one team, once they start to kind of crumble, and 6-1, 12 minutes in, is really a crumble, if you ask me. 2-0 on Jarvan, 2-0 on Azir. Even with the bounty, they're looking good and feeling good. Mm. But still, Snowman Slammers is like, we are controlling objectives. We don't care if we're dying. In yeah. fact, why don't you meet us in the mid lane and see if you're able to defend this turret? Because boom, there she goes. But here, as you can see, Graves caught in a little bit of a trouble as Zig's gonna get oh, pushed here by the oh, he shovel. Him. He actually gets the kill! <laughs> what a beauty of a play coming out from Chaos Vermin. And J4 are gonna be like, ah oh, man, rats. I gotta see a replay on that. I absolutely need to. Show me! <laughs> Show me, production team. So they ended up getting the tower, which is really good. And the one thing that Ziggs didn't do here that was good is he didn't walk up. He didn't want to walk up because there was a big ass a zero, <laughs> a zero wall in front of them. Whoops! But that's just a lot of damage that went down. Sometimes. Ended up the, walking down. The Sharima shuffle really do be thick sometimes. Sprawling across an entire turret side and then some, but Ziggs able to come out on top as now Snowman Slammers is inching away from a 2k deficit down to a 1k deficit and soon to be 0k deficit. And that's really all they need. It's a game of inches here for Snowman Slammers as they're trying to make their way through this early game where issue is critical is applying the pressure. Yeah, and you can see that the rest of uh, Snowman Slammers are just kind of sitting in a weird position as well. Their bot lane still very supportive, right? Uh, over down there, and you can already see a fight going down too. Ooh, ulti coming out here from Senna. And really, they're just poking back and forth. Braum with the hero flash with the ignite, but oh, here comes Mordekaiser. He's ready to party. One Q and say goodnight. The double kill going over to Uncle Derry. And I hope he brought some potluck chicken for dinner because he's looking like he's on top. And he wants to keep going. He does not want to stop here in this lane. The momentum has really got to him. Don't know if that's going to really mess him up, though. Ooh, Ord here. He's ready to party as well. Going to be the knockup, the EQ combo from Jarvan. Not actually going to connect. Ja There's going to be six, and Jarvan bites off too much as Mordekaiser takes his third kill of the game with Orn running with his tail between his legs as Snowman Slammers comes out on top. Yeah, and they're just going to keep pushing here in this ball lane. They have a massive priority just to take this tower. I don't know if Orin's going to stay, though, is the major, major question. There's a couple of pings that are going down here, and the Azir TP is coming in as well. Ooh, that's going to be dangerous. The Satchel actually going to create some space as Command Attack here, now trying to push in that top side. Great rotation coming out from Snowman Slammers. They're making their way to that top side. Tom Kench going to catch that wave and try to set up a play around this Rift Herald because what's bot side? 
nothing. nothing. We got a minute left till the next dragon. They don't even force the turret. They try to get the scuttle, try to get something at least. But now with this Rift Herald start, Snowman Slammers is in control. Graves used his E. He's used it twice now here in this pit. I don't know if he actually has it up. He does. He's just going to dash over the wall. Does he want to try and go in and steal it is the big question. Or do they have enough members around this pit in order to contest? And sadly, the answer is yeah, giving it up is really the safe play with four members looking hot and Ziggs pushing in that bot side. You're essentially trading turret for turret and they don't yeah. mind that trade at all. But they kind of do mind it if they're looking to force that mid turret and that's why you see Senna and Tom Kench in that mid lane mm. really just pushing as much as they can. Yeah, there's really there's no turret to get there so they're completely fine but Jarvin's there. Ooh, man, the EQ combo has landed every oh, single so time. Fast. But here comes Mordekaiser. With the Aphelios ult, going to be trying to do a little bit of damage. The Braum ult as well, trying to create a fissure down the river. But it's actually not really going to be followed up with anything as the reset comes out from both teams. And now issue is critical. What seemed to be a really great early game hasn't kept up with objectives. Is now looking a little rough. They were 2k up. And that was the big thing that I was thinking about. Is can they keep this 2k lead? Because it can really build into something. But in the mid lane, there's going to oh, be a fight. Or he's going to be knocking up that temp, tom, tom, temp Kench. But that's going to be a beautiful ult coming out from Senna. Not actually going to be doing any damage. But it's going to heal so many members up. Tom Kench does fall. But issue is critical. Is on the retreat. Here is going to be the ultimate. Orin's going to be caught in the Shadow Realm. But now Uncle Derry is looking to banish him out. That's going to be a little bit of damage. Q comes out here from Ziggs, able the to looting. connect. Now that's going to be the two kills going over to Snowman Slammers as they focus their attention onto the Drake, and you're freaking out over the Ludens. The Ludens echo was the thing that ended up killing the Orn there. Oh, that's not, that's never fun. But let's let's look at a replay because the dragon was just taken. We have a little bit of downtime here. Let's take a look at the rest of this fight. The Orn ultimate onto the one target could have been a little bit better. Of course, there was three members in that choke that could have potentially been hit and wasn't. However, this Ziggs bomb as well could have done a little bit more damage. But you could see that just the waddling, the waddling Orn inside of the Mordekaiser ultimate was not enough. The Mordekaiser ult itself was not enough. And the Ludens was oh the thing that ended God. up falling. I paid attention to it super closely. I almost glued my eyeballs to the screen. And what I found in that process was Aphelios stepped on a bomb. Yeah. His little tippy toe. And that actually killed Orn. The ADC <sighs> always blamed the ADC. It's always Got the it. ADC's fault. Yeah. Out of position. Mm -hmm. Never in the right position. Never. Orn here going to be trying to get that Bottom wave answered here by the Mordekaiser. Bot lane for Snowman Slammer is going to be making it with their way to that top side. Azir can recall and try to reposition. But the Rift Herald spawned in the mid lane. Like I said earlier, that would kind of be the turret that they would want to try to open up this map a little bit more. But it's not it's not down yet. It should be Aphelios here taking it. And that's going to be quite clean. But one thing I really got to talk about, and you can even back me yeah. up on this. Beautiful vision game from Insane. Snowman Slammers. Really just across the river, ready to spot out anything. The entire team on it with the pink wards, always staying active. The one thing that's now starting to clue in is that the last dragon, the soul dragon, is coming up in three minutes. That's insane at 20 minutes into this match, just because Graves was so on it since the beginning of the game. Go right towards the dragon, take it, gain that priority for his team. Definitely really good for his whole entire squad, and they're already set up for it. They've got the scuttle available. Of course, that doesn't last three minutes, but they also have just one pink ward down there. That sometimes that's all you need to send the rest of your squad top lane. Because if they can get this top lane tower and back oh, off. Oh, baby, the Sharima shuffle. It's clean. Senna gets taken out in the process, but Snowman Slammers, they're looking for more. Graves bites on too much, and they are trying to combo it with the Ziggzold, but it's not going to be enough as the Zanyas comes out. Tom Kench flashes out that's gonna be the one for one and they turn around they're looking for more Six. graves is leading the charge he gets rooted in the process that's gonna be the ziggs bomb it's deadly it bounces but it's not gonna be enough as issue is critical just backs away and a beautiful shreema shuffle still turn things around for a one for one trade always love to see the tank match up in the bot lane just going head to head just to see if they could ever match up against each other answer is gonna be no but definitely in that top lane it was a really nice turn of scenario. I want to watch that again. Because initially, 
That center just got popped. It was just, there was no question about that. The Azir wall came in, really nice Sarima shuffle, getting knocked up all over the place. And then just the immediate turn onto these squishies was just not enough to do it. The flash out was really good. The late stopwatch was kind of weird. And the kiting potential of Tom Kench and Graves came out installed enough for Ziggs to finally come and just clean up the absolute mess that the team provided. However, there's a bot lane match. Ooh, Rami's looking a little bit a, a little bit healthy, but half HP gonna walk away as the dragon yet to spawn. A minute 30 left. Snowman Slammer is looking to get that 20 minute soul, something we talked about in the pick and ban phase here for Snowman Slammers playing to their win condition and boy have they. Two turrets up, a 1k gold lead separating them but really not, not really the big picture is the dragon potentially going to be going over to Snowman Slammers here and the soul going to give them way more value than money's worth. But the dance is about to begin. It usually takes about a minute. In order to set up for Dragon, you know that a team is really, really prepared for an objective when you start setting up a minute beforehand, but uh, they only really kept Mordekaiser down here because there's still more to do around this map. They gotta start setting up two or three steps into the future, right? And they go around this Baron Pit. Again, only just one little pink ward is enough to do it, where you just start to you start the setup process. They tried it down here with Dragon. It definitely worked out for them, but Graves may have stepped up a little bit too far, but they didn't capitalize on that. You gotta watch out for little things like that. Issue is critical. Could have tried to capitalize, Whoa, but they definitely doing it now. Oh, baby, the Sharima shuffle. It's looking like a Sharima tango as he gets two. That's gonna be a beautiful combination, but Eric Zay, he's popping off. That's gonna give you one kill, but it's a one for one so far as Graves is still leading the charge. Jarvin's running away. That's gonna oh. be the LT. It doesn't even connect, and the fight continues. The Azir turret is trying to do work. Aphelios, he's got that long range shot, but still, issue is critical. Has to back away from the dragon, and Snowman Slammers completes the 22 minute Dragon Soul. It was just a one for one at the end of the day. They sacrificed the Tom Kench, and it was a beautiful scenario that came out of that because everyone on issue is critical got low there for just a little bit. Look at a replay of that too, because we want to see the health bars of what issue is critical escaped with. Already half HP of Felios. Now the Shurima shuffle was okay, but it wasn't the priority targets that they ended up needing. The Tom Kench is just so incredibly good at protecting his teammates. And you see here as well that the Mordekaiser was just so incredibly good in this scenario as well. Just tanking up all of this damage. Three low health bars as well as the tank on half. Got to go back to base and you have to reset. Really, one thing that I noticed in that fight that was really critical was Mordekaiser ended up ulting Jarvin, which wasn't allowed to EQ yeah. or Cataclysm. Yeah. Which, to be honest, would have been a completely different fight, Huge. right? If, if, Jar if Jarvin was able Fizzle to... Voyage. Go inside. Oh, baby. Oh, Sorry. baby. <laughs> Looking like the Shreema Shuffle going to be pushing Tom Kench away, but now is here caught between a rock and a hard place. A snowman slammer. He got a tree. Oh my goodness. The one for one. And now here, Issues Critical is looking to capitalize as Graves leads the charge. And Aphelios is off to the side. J4 going to EQ over. And Uncle Derry pushing on through, but beautiful play here from Azir. And actually, that's both mid lanes wants this match. Doing something a little fancy, getting the, well, getting the kill where they really shouldn't be, but now the Baron. Yeah, it's the Control Mages, the Battle of the Control Mages. Definitely in this scenario, you have the Orn Horde coming out, though. Ooh, baby, it's like actually not going to knock up too many members. And they actually turn their attention onto the Orn. The ultimate going to be coming out. Now the rest of the team focuses on this 3v3. The Brawnmouth going to connect. Tom Kench is just so tanky. The Cataclysm, this time able to end. But the in and out from There's Tom Kench. No Graves is able to get a two-piece. And now Aphelios in a little trouble. Santa gets the assist and a killing spree for Ziggs. And it's going to be good. For Snowman Slammers. The Ocean Dragon was what solidified that fight. The Graves was on minuscule HP the whole entire fight. And when you attack champions while you have the Ocean Dragon, it heals your health bar. Are we gonna see a, just a conclusion here? Not too, no, we're not. But it definitely a Baron is what we're going to see going in here for Snowman Slammers. We were saying, I was saying, that I, I didn't really have faith in this squad unless they ended up getting the objectives, really nice Baron buff uh, Ooh, timer, by the way. Fancy. That was kind of that was kind of fancy. I like that one, but um, yeah, we we were talking about the objectives, and that's really what solidified their victory. Yeah, I, like you said.
We criticized them in the pick and ban phase, but boy, did they prove us wrong. Mordekaiser 414, Graves 414, Ziggs 429. And now with the 6k gold lead, Dragon Soul and Baron, I would be stunned if they don't close out this game. It wasn't through their ball lane. You knew that the, the that Snowman Slammers weren't going to win through their ball lane. It was going to be through mid and top. And this is what we were talking about in Champion Select, where you got to get the Ziggs fed if you can. And they ended up doing it. Same thing with the Mordekaiser, and they ended up doing that as well. He's got all of his main priority items. He just wants to get just a little bit more tanky. Right? You get the Spear of Fissage under your belt. belt. You have a little bit more quid on direction as well as MR. Definitely really good for yourselves, but... Now is the time for complete domination to try and close out this match. And this is usually where some teams actually end up falling, is where they ha they have the Baron. They've got all of the things that are, are in the recipe for success, and they just end up falling to massive amounts of weight there. Now we'll have to see how they decide to answer back. They still have their win condition, which is team fighting. Yep. They might need to try to fight or try to get a pick or an advantageous group fight because Mordekaiser has actually been quite the problem in this game, he's able to solidify one target, and that target can't really do enough damage to him. And you see that with the Orn being taken out of the J4. And now really caught out of position, the Graves trying to bait them out with the 3v1. They lose a turret, and now the inhib here in the bot lane. This issue is critical. Gets caught with their pants down, but Jarvin's looking to answer back as he's here in the bot lane, the 3v4. Not really the most optimal fight. Aphelios off to the side as Graves is pushing in that mid wave. Issue is critical is really having an issue with deciding what is it that they want to focus on. And that's going to be a little bit brutal as now Snowman Slammers is rotating to that mid lane. And actually, they're just going to almost kill the Braum here. The ultimate going to wow. be coming out. They finished that off. And this is looking like GG coming out from the Snowman Slammers as they're pushing in on the Nexus. Or not the Nexus, but rather yeah, the inhibitors. Yeah. But backing off for safety, or rather, as they just go to the top lane, just going one lane at a time. That's it. Really, issue is critical. It needs to start thinking about this next game and how they answer in the draft. Because they do have that early game potential, right? Yeah. Like, they do have the potential to do well. And you saw that with the first early four kills. But Snowman Slammer staying resolute and staying alive, only to really start to close this game out. Definitely very weird because you ended up seeing in the mid lane initially that they tried to engage issues critical, tried to engage onto the Graves. Graves was just able to kite out their opponents. You had Ziggs in the ball lane just doing massive amounts of damage to all of the turrets as well as the inhibitor itself. When it's too late, the Jarvan tried to engage onto nothing there. It's just not the best because they just couldn't do anything. They had all five members in the mid lane. And when you're in a position where you're just letting your inhibitors die, it's better just to try and fight and and just hope that something great happens instead of just stalling this game out for another five minutes. Now with Elder spawning, they are kind of taking the correct approach and at least trying to set up for it. But there's vision across the board for Snowman Slammers as they completely spot this out. And now the Scrying Bloom can be able to catch rest of the members here and really right now it's all or nothing they really yeah. have to fight during this graves actually going to start a tussle here in the top side with warren and jarvin's getting in deep goes in onto the tom kenjin center not able to capitalize at all here comes the yakobi coming out from chaos Furman, and he takes out jarvin they take out another are they looking for the third no issue is critical has to defend their base now the senna Gonna shroud up her team and push on through. This is where Abyssal Voyage would be phenomenal, but the Great. cooldown is just up. They hop in one at a time. Graves is gonna hop in as well, and they're looking to capitalize here. They turn their attention onto the Brahm. The shield's up. Santa wow. ult comes out. Azir's in trouble. Sharima not gonna be enough to stop the attack from Snowman Slammers as Graves styles on the opposition. And with minions flooding the base, Snowman Slammers take game number one. 30 minutes into the game, 20 to 11. They ended up coming out on top, even though issue is critical, had a little bit of an advantage in the early game. The objective game was just way too much to deal with. That was that was massive. Also, the Ziggs. Ziggs just popped off there in, the, in that game as well. That was a story of playing to your win condition. If you're ever in solo queue and your Olaf is off running into the back line, he's playing his win condition. He's just doing Don't, it. Don't flame him. He's <laughs> playing to his win condition, even if he goes 0-7. The point being here 
is that Snowman Slammers did a phenomenal job of capitalizing on all of the little windows that they had. Every time Rift and Dragon was up, Graves was panting, sprinting Usain Bolt straight right down to that objective, and they secured every single one. Yeah, it, it started in the early game. Clear your blue side jungle, take the first dragon, and continue the process from there. And that's what Graves ended up doing. Whenever Jarvan was doing something proactive in one of the one of the lanes, he was on an objective. He was on the Rift Herald first. He was on the first dragon. Constant setup uh, with pink wards in the rivers themselves in order to set up all of these objectives. Definitely really good out of this player. Yeah, we're going to take a little bit of a short break, I think, uh, just to get the players a little bit of time to talk about their, their picks and bans that are going to be going into Game 2. Don't you go anywhere. Upsurge Premier League, Premier League action going to be coming right up with Simo and Saved One. Don't you go anywhere.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Upsurge Premier League. I'm David Seymour Rabinovich, and alongside me this time, I've got Daniel, the safe one meta. We've got ourselves an action-packed match of the Snowman Slammers up against Issue is Critical. So far, Snowman Slammers lead the series by one, and we're about to head into our second pick and ban. Yeah, it could be really cool just to see uh, what Issue is Critical want to change up for this match because they didn't do the absolute best job there in the last game. Um, definitely kind of unfortunate, but we were harping. I was harping a lot on Snowman Slammers during the pick ban phase. I just was not confident in the Graves pick, and he just completely proved me wrong. And I don't think it was really a Graves problem. I think that just the Jarvan didn't do anything, right? We saw him in the early game not really get around a whole lot, and it, that kind of transi transitioned into the mid game as well as the late game. Imagine if Jarvan actually got that early game kill onto Senna. That would have been absolutely massive. Didn't end up saving his uh, flag and drag, only ended up getting the Tom Kench in the ball in to secure a first blood is good and all, but it's not a double kill that you really want your Aphelios to really to have in an early game matchup. And you got to think about all of these little things. If they went right, could we see a different victory? Now, obviously, we did see issues critical. I'm going to move my mic a little bit closer to my mouth. Obviously, we did see issues critical pick a little bit of a standard comp, but something that I see time and time again, especially on the world stage, is you see the same thing kind of regurgitated over and over again. The moment somebody picks something that's different, you don't really know how to react to it because you yeah. haven't been used to playing it for the past month, right? Yeah. It's been the same in Felios or in Meta for quite some time, but we'll have to see how issues critical adapt this time around. Yeah, and you can see that the initial first couple of bans are going to be crazy. You pointed out it immediately. The Graves are going to be banned out for issues critical. Of course, we saw Graves in the last game be very dominant. The set, we saw that banned as well. The Cassiopeia, we saw that banned as well. And the Yumi, so standard bans all across. I'm going to call a Vagar ban. I'm going to use my crystal ball. I'm going to look into the future. And I'm going to... Oh, I was close. I was Almost. close. I was Almost. close. Orin... They're like brothers. Orin's just a big, exactly. bigger yordle. He kind of was growing up a little bit, um, you know, picked on because everyone was really small and he was the only yep. guy that was big. But anyways, we do see the Yumi, Olaf, Cassio, and Set, but the lock-in onto the Syndra, leaving it open, you're going to pay the price. And once again, my priority still stands where on blue side, you have to pick a pick where you think that this is going to be the game decider matchup. And Snowman Slammers right now, they think that the Syndra is really good. It was banned out once again in that last draft. So now we get to actually see it in action. Syndra really good in the mid lane. A lot of burst damage once she gets uh, one of her main items as well. Uh, we get to see a whole lot of damage in the mid lane. Maybe we'll see issues critical matchup with something kind of crazy. The Ziggs is definitely a huge one. They actually could pick Ziggs in this first rotation because the Syndra was picked. They could also save Ziggs for that third slot. But we're, we'll have to see. Also, the Senna. Being that major priority ADC was really good in the last game. We get to see it once again. Elise being hovered here. And you're praying to Please. the gods. Oh, and the Elise. gods have answered. There you go. As we enter into the rotation here for Snowman Slammers to pick their next picks. And I think still an overall strong start. But I do kind of feel like showing Elise early doesn't leave room for adaptation. No. Um, as potentially Snowman Slammers now picks their jungle. But now they can react to the Elise and potentially counter the Hecarim being hovered. And it's going to be locked in. Snowman Slammers playing kind of funky. Yeah, the Hecarim is a solo queue pick. Just because Hecarim loves to get around really fast, get a lead in the early game, and then transition that. The problem is that if Hecarim doesn't get a lead in the early game, his transition is really bad. Because he needs a lot of priority items in order to get ahead. Very expensive priority items at that. He needs the Triforce. And just that alone... It's Triforce, so you got to watch out for uh, for that. At least it's just standard. Almost for a second there, thought we were playing Ruin Terra with the Shadow Wilds lock in with the Hecarim and the Mordekaiser. The Mordekaiser did do a super swell job in the last game, isolating priority targets. We'll have to see who he isolates this game as issues critical is locking in their last pick in the Morgana. Morgana. Hover here, going to be potentially locked in. And I've been playing a little bit of Morgana support, so I kind of know the inner workings. Mm. And I think it's a super solid pick, especially against the Syndra, is going to be able to create opportunities and especially deny in an 
absolutely insane amount of CC against this enemy team. The Q from uh, Morgana plus the auto Q auto from Senna is going to be massive down there in the bot lane versus whatever the Snowman Slammers have up their sleeve. What's kind of surprising me is they want to attack the support pool. A little bit weird that you would not want to target the ADC pool if your issue is critical because you have a priority ADC you could ban out the Aphelios as well as the MF maybe force the Ezreal like you were saying uh, last game out but they don't they don't really want to they just want to take out the support pool maybe the support pool is a little bit more uh, choked out on the other side though they're looking more at that mid lane matchup just take out all of the priority mid laners that counter Syndra could be the easier as well as the Ziggs here maybe if they want to try and choose that but yeah you could see a zoe band out here as well another really phenomenal long-range pick and the zigs like you predicted going to be the one <laughs> yeah just dab on him a little bit <laughs> we're going to be entering into the next pick phase here i believe four issues critical and they're going to have to decide who they want in that top lane or the mid lane as we're still not quite done that band but still oh, yeah. Pinching both sides of the pool. Issue is critical. Taking out that support pool. I still think Snowman Slammers has a lot to play with. Nautilus is up. Gonna give you yeah. that engage tool to pair up with that Hecarim. And it's gonna make things a little bit troublesome. They didn't show too much in the early in the early matchup. They first picked the Syndrome, which is good in the mid lane. It's a strong priority mid lane. They showed the Hecarim, but they didn't show the bot lane. Just take that top lane pool. Zaya Rakan is open. Yeah. Zaya Rakan is open, folks. Massive. Darius is going to be locked in here. Not sure how he does against Mordekaiser, but still creating that opportunity for Mordekaiser to isolate. It's going to be way more detrimental in the team fights. That's what Snowman Slammers decides to kind of opt in for. And we're going to see the bot lane show here. Snowman Slammers. I would love to see a Zaya Rakan. I think that could fit quite well into this matchup, creating a lot of opportunity for engage and disengage. But the karma. Ooh. Snowman Slammers keeping it fresh and funky for us and that's going to be locked in into that support a lot of poke already here in the ball lane coming out of karma as well as engage with her e her e power up would be really good what do they want to pair with it though the aphelios is up you could shove in an ezreal in that case the mf not really i don't really like that matchup too much because you need the tether to go off on uh on karma in order to really make that work to, for the synergy to really work, but I'm not too sure. Because I am. Yeah. Okay, 50% I'll take it. If I were to go to the casino right now, my odds would be better than most. Is the Zaya going to be locked in? And that last pick, the Anivia. Anivia. What is this game? Are we in 2015 or something like that? What's going on? Karma kind of confusing me. The Hecarim. <laughs> I don't want to say that the Hecarim is confusing me because I have seen it really pop off in a lot of cases too. As well, the Vagar with the Hover. Oh. Maybe they just want a supportive type mid laner. Oh? Yeah. Wow. That's exactly what they want. I do have to warn them that they do have a lot of AP. So and they're AP. going to need to rely on the Senna and the Darius. And this is going to be one of those games where you build Merc Treads and you start to hate your life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's really yeah. That's really the bread and butter. I was watching, I forget who, I think it was Tyler1. He was playing Olaf. And he looked at the draft and he was like, oh. Gonna be one of those games I just build Merc Treads and I hate my life. <laughs> <laughs> it happens in a lot of cases, and this is definitely gonna be one of those where you, you, you're facing a Vagar, you're facing a Morgana, uh, you're facing an Elise. Can't, it's a lot of CC. It's a lot of CC that you're gonna be uh, facing against. You get hit by the Elise Cocoon, you say, I'm out. Don't worry about it. You get hit by a Morgana binding. Ah, oh, crap. That kind of sucks. You get, you know, caged up by Vagar. You got to deal with that. You got to flash out of that one. Then you've got a Darius flanking you. It's a very nice solo queue type comp that Issues Critical is pulling out here. Sometimes in these amateur scenes, you got to pull out the solo queue for a game. This is going to be one of those games where I really think Cloud Soul, or sorry, not Cloud Soul, even just the Cloud um, Dragon being the soul, creating those rifts of speed is going to be insanely important for issues critical. They've got probably one of the most slow moving comps I've ever mm. seen in my entire life. Yep. Morgana moves. I play a lot. Of, I have, I'm mastery seven on Morgana. Oh, so you know. I know. Even with <laughs> Mobies, I'm dragging my cape down. It's slowing me the hell down. Vagar, a Yordle, we all know, slowest movement speed race in yeah. the class. Senna, insane damage. Yep. But Very she's slow. carrying a heavy gun. Yeah. It's difficult to sprint in those conditions. At least being the, really the only one, and Darius as well, yeah. that can be able to catch up. But if Darius is sprinting towards that back line, who's going to follow? 
I absolutely love Elise. I'm just going to put that out there that I have. <laughs> you profess your love Dude. on one knee. Dude. You will bend the knee. I've got 500k <laughs> mastery points. I've played this champion way too much. But this is going to be such a fun matchup to watch. It's very aggressive versus very aggressive. Elise, one of her best matchups is versus farming junglers. Hecarim is kind of that jungler. Uh, just because Elise... Her in, herself in the early game, one of the things that a lot of Elise mains have to kind of get over is her early game damage sometimes. It's just, it's hard to predict. But she's got a lot of burst damage in the early game. You use your full combo in human form and it doesn't do too much damage. Then you get into spider form and you're doing crazy amounts of damage. So we got to watch out for these Elise ganks. Because she can get under tower, she can repel up, totally negate the, uh, the tower shot damage and just get out scot-free we got to watch out for this jungle matchup it's going to be so much fun to watch talk to me a little bit about um the inner workings of both of these teams because i think this is one of the yeah. one of those days where you really got to break down the comp oh, when yeah. we have something like a standard zier j4 yeah. Melios, braum and orn you know orn's gonna alt j4 is gonna alt braum's gonna stand by me alt yep. as well yep like it's pretty straightforward. Of course. We had a PB&J. You know what's in it already. Exactly. But here we got a Caesar salad mixed with some collard greens. You have no idea what's going on, on in there. <laughs> He's talking Talk to about, me yeah. about Snowman. both of these teams. Sure. Start with Snowman Slammers. What can we expect kind of in the dynamic of, of what they're looking to accomplish? So since you guys you can see our beautiful faces, we can actually see the champions select. We're looking at Mordekaiser top lane, Hecarim in the jungle, mid lane Syndra with Zaya and Karma in the bot lane. If you guys ended up forgetting, it's all good. Because I forget too. That's why we need the screen in front of us. But... We gotta remember about this comp is that they have a lot of single target pick damage, right? You got the recall of the feathers, can really catch one or two targets out off guard. You've got the the karma that can speed up, put up put out her tether. One <laughs> <laughs> the tether. She can hit the wall. Tethers. She's tethering. <laughs> it's the tether. It's the tether. Uh, she she can do a lot of damage. She can slow the target with her uh, of. Um, her ultimate, as well as her Q combo, you have the Syndra with her Scatter of the Weak, and then you also have the Hecarim ultimate and the Mordekaiser Ralt. And I think in this case, the Mordekaiser is going to fit a lot better with this squad because of what it offers. The Hecarim is going to be in the back line. They have a really nice support system with the Karma and the Zaya, even though it's not a tank in the bot lane. It's a lot of damage that you have to face through with the Syndra sitting beside you. I really like the Snowman Slammers' comp because of the amount of pick that they have. And in the amateur scene, there's going to be a lot of pick. And to be quite honest, they're going to need to be the ones that are the aggressors. They're looking to target first. And they're looking to primarily, at least what it feels like to me, is to create skirmishes or picks, like you're saying. Yeah. Because their problem is their innate squishiness. Mordekaiser is not a reliable front line. As tanky as he may be, he's not really building resistances. Mm. And I guess against a team like this, they're going to just shred through with that with that AP yep. um, from the Elise, from the Vagar, even from the Morgana. She can really pack a punch if you yeah. ignore her. Um, but let's move on to issues sure. critical and talk to me a little, about, a little bit about the inner workings of this team, considering you've got your favorite all-star Elise a part of the lineup. They've got a solo queue comp. Darius is a noob killer, and that's what I always love to say. <laughs> if you're dying to Darius, it's because you're a noob. Mainly because if you're auto-attack battling a Darius... He gets you to five stacks and you're dead. That's just kind of Darius' win condition in the lane matchup. I think that versus Mordekaiser, you can definitely do that. The only problem is that Mordekaiser, he's got a shield. So that's kind of it. But Darius, once again, he, get, he gets into melee range of you. He can slow you for 40% with his W. He's got the slow with his E. He's, you know, the mini knockup as well as the slow that that offers. He's got the Q. If, he, if you get out of range, if you want to flash out of the range, you flash right into his Q. Right, so we gotta watch out for that top lane matchup, but they're all across the board as well. You got the Vagar, so annoying to face against with the cage coming up randomly into the fights as well. The Morgana, the Morgana with her stun. You've got the Senna we saw there in the last game. How much she actually impacted a team fight really surprised me as well. Uh, her being used as just more of a supportive pick. You don't rely on Senna to carry. You rely on her to support and win fights just astronomically. Right, uh, Elise. Going to be diving. Hopefully going to be diving. And we're, we might see that in the top lane, definitely, where she wants to focus hint and nudge nudge. But, <laughs> <laughs> you know, also in these mobile lane matchups, like in the mid lane where you have a bunch of CC and a lot of damage to deal with something like that. So, issue's critical, man. We'll have to see how pound... 
pounds out. We'll have to see how it pans Still out, obviously. Yeah, pants. we're eating pants. Um, but one category that's going to carry us through is Midwest Esports. Are they? I think they are. Are they? I, I got to pick up my phone. <laughs> <laughs> Midwest Esports has been around for many years. Many years. Many years. Starting as a small student group out of Wichita State University. Since then, Midwest Esports has grown to be a veteran organizer of tournaments and events throughout the U.S. They host tournaments for games like League of Legends, Rocket League, as well as Overwatch. For more information, for more information check them out at MidwestEsports.com. Yeah, Mouthful's not included, but still a phenomenal organization to get behind. And they own us. And they own us, <laughs> yes. Keep the roof above our heads, but <coughs> the one roof that is quite unstable is this matchup between these two teams. Still not quite sure who's going to come out on top. Could it be issues critical with their kind of AP heavy comp? Or it could be <laughs> Snowman Slammers. <laughs> We're never, we're never doing that ever again. <laughs> Trust me, you have my word. We'll never do it again. No. Um, I still kind of really like to see what both of these teams are made of. We were very critical of Snowman Slammers in the previous game, and now issue is critical is coming out. Issue is critical is coming out with their own comp, saying, "Hey, look at me! Don't forget me! I've yeah. got some funky picks too." Yeah. Um, and it's going to be even more intense if somehow, for some reason, Elise's top and Darius' jungle not going to be the case. I can assure you that. But with the changes, Darius, he can't jungle. He can yeah. do it. He gets a he, he gets a uh, a heal now from blue buff and red buff. Like he gets a heal from large monsters. That's good. That's some good stuff. Um, still not going to be enough to be viable because <laughs> he's not really yeah. that mobile. Well, let's hop right let's into it. the game. Finally, and thank you for being so patient with us. As now we are thirty seconds deep into this matchup with the teams both fanning out across the board. It's all up to the jungle matchup is what we're looking at here. Elise versus Hecarim, just like in the last game, we ended up seeing Jarvan versus Graves, and definitely the Graves with the objective, as well as the lane pressure, allowed them really win that. We're also going to be seeing here in this match the exact same thing. One of the things I do want to kind of point out here is I've never played this kind of style where Sen is the support yep. and... Um, the the support is the ADC kind of this this freaky weird, Friday man. Lindsay Lohan type energy, <laughs> um, but Morgana, there's a reason why she's not a laner anymore. Um, or it's gonna be difficult to farm. Um, yeah. I know that these guys are professionals; they know what they're doing. But truth be told, those autos take forever to wind up yes. and knock them down. So we're gonna have to see if they struggle in the laning phase, and it's gonna be extremely difficult against an insanely harass heavy. Karma and Zaya. Yeah, the main like like you just touched on, the main problem with Morgana is her wave clear. Sometimes that's why you max the black so, uh, dark soil. But yeah. Yo. <laughs> I don't like I don't like this either. That clear. Oh man. Eric Z Yang is gonna be holding on for dear life, fighting this this Gromp. <laughs> oh man, you're right. This is crazy play by play crazy action. Crazy play by play <laughs> action. The Gromp gonna be giving him a little bit of HP. Maybe not really used to the Hecarim, or maybe it's been a while since he's last played it. But like I said, the Harass just gonna be coming in. I expect a CS lead coming up from Zaya heavily. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. um, but again, this might be one of those scenarios where the key is not the bot lane, right? No. They're looking for they're looking to scale. Um, uh, but once that Zanyas comes out, we'll see a completely different game. That's the only problem is that you need the Zanyas. And even in a mid lane matchup where you're forced to f build Zanyas first, you don't get it until 10 minutes. Yeah. Same thing is going to happen here in the bot lane. Even though you're an ADC, or APC kind of, I don't know. APC. Whatever. Yeah. The, you're not League of Legends it. is tough now. <laughs> you're not <laughs> getting it until 15 is, is yeah. the main point. One of the things that I do have to kind of touch on, and it's kind of good for both teams, is that there's a lack of Infernal. No. <laughs> there's a severe lack of Infernal Soul that's going to be going to both teams. And if either team gets the Infernal Soul, that's going to be rough for the other team. So the fact that it's off the table is going to create some opportunities. And like I said, the, the cloud... The gank, baby! The cloud's going to be the most ideal. But like you called it, Uncle Derry, he smells something up. The stun's going to connect. Oh, but Darius, he actually falters. And Elise is going to be going in. The, the, the repel goes up. And now she's going to turn it around. The Q comes out. Yeah. And that's going to be first blood. Going over to Darius in the wind condition, you're punching the air, Woo. but you're doing so because the Elise is clean. It was a little bit anxious by the Elise to do what she just did, and I want to see a replay of that. 
because... It was the Darius that faltered, actually. Yeah, he just kind a of, little bit. He could have autoed that last minion and then gone, right? But at least going in, saying, I want to go in, I want to go in, and then finally... Yeah, she just tanked a couple of tower shots, but she's still fine. The only problem from Darius is he actually walked away from the tower. If he ended up staying beside his tower, then Darius would have been able to tank a little bit, maybe use his flash there, but he didn't. Still has his flash, still has his, has his ignite. In the bot lane, though, we're starting to see that Hecarim. Does he want to gank this? Ooh, standing right over a ward, believe it or not, Hecarim is looking for his opportunity, but you can't stop a dive, to be quite honest, as Karma and Zaya try to push in this wave, and Hecarim is looking to cook up. He actually wow. pops the sweeper's lens, catches the ward, and almost actually falling. Like you said, five autos and your Dunskis. Now Mordekaiser's in a tough spot. TP's down. Ignite is down for Darius as well. That's something super important to point out. He can't really duel as much anymore. But now Mordekaiser's going to have an incredibly rough laning phase. But it's expected. Darius yeah. is early game. Like There's really not much you can do about it. Hasn't even gone back to base yet. Has 32 CS to Mordekaiser's 17. Yeah, there's just really nothing that... <laughs> that, heck, uh, that wow. Mordekaiser can do here in this matchup, like you just said. He's just kind of getting choked out. The one saving grace for himself he is, is he does Ooh. have the shield. Actually minute misses the big hand, but Hecker is still going to connect. That's going to be the TP. He comes out from Vagar. Darius sick. actually flashes, and now that's going to be the stun onto Mordekaiser. Ooh. Elise is there as well, the one for one so far. And Hecarim is looking to turn things around, but the Cocoon's not going to be able to land. There's too many minions, but that's going to be the Cocoon that does eventually land the double kill going over to Vagar, but the fight's not over yet. Karma and Syndra are making their way up. Elise walks right oh. into him. Scatter of the Week connects, <laughs> and the Repel not going to be enough as Vagar See ya. recall. Can he get it? No. Syndra's just going to get some CS, some money for her troubles, but let's lock and load, and let's watch that replay. Yeah, let's do it. Let's analyze that just a little bit, because it was a lot that we ended up seeing. The only thing I saw was Hecarim ended up using his E to speed up actually pretty effectively. Only problem was is he didn't save it to knock the Darius back into the Mordekaiser. Mordekaiser, though, was actually pretty low. Really nice TP as well, coming in from Vagar. The Elise did not flash to Cocoon the Mordekaiser, I believe it was, or it may have been someone else. But anyways, we also ended up seeing that little river fight that went down. Elise ended up falling, whatever, whatever. In the top lane, though, we got the 2v1 matchup. Yeah, I'm not really sure why Hecarim is showing here. Maybe just pushing up the wave um, for the Syndra. Yeah, she did try to kind of try to push that wave in um, for the Mordekaiser, and she stayed a little bit too long, and Darius was able to start a little bit of a tussle with her. But now the Dragon Call coming out from the Elise, able to solo it quite effectively. The Actually, a ward's going to spot this out. Yeah. They're aware completely of the scenario. Hecarim is just going to stay resolute and potentially try to gank that Darius in the top side, but nope, he's just going to be white making his way downtown. The only dragon that Elise can solo at this point in the game is the Ocean Dragon, because her Spiderlings only take one-third damage from every single hit of Ocean Dragon, and it, it only focuses one minion. However, Infernal is just two hits to both. Yeah. And it, yeah, it's just kind of unfortunate, so that's why she couldn't really solo that one. Um, but she just needed a little bit of extra help, but it's good. It's good that you have your Morgana as well as your Senna able to get into uh, that pit. But the one thing that's kind of surprising me, though, is that Morgana is actually keeping up in CS versus the Zaya. So kind of a little bit of, I don't want to say a misprediction, because it's, it's very easy to predict that Zaya is just going to win this CS matchup. But it's really good coming out of next big thing to say, hey, I can actually CS. Yeah, it's going to also feel good considering I feel like with Elise, you're going to be able to solidify this early game. But again, Issues Critical solidified the early game last time. Snowman mm -hmm. Slammers was just able to hold fast and able to operate under under intense conditions. Yep. With this Rift Herald spawning, Hecarim is looking and poised and ready as the complete other side of the map looks like oh. a teenager's face. Pimples all across the board. Four <laughs> pink wards making sure that vision is crispy clean. But Hecarim is going to be looking for it. That's going to be Mordekaiser in a lot of trouble. You don't want to dance with the Darius. Going to be the ult here. It's going to be coming out here from Hecarim. Syndra is looking to get crispy. Uses trying to get the damage onto at least the Repel going to connect. Flash comes out as well. And they're going to continue the fight. The shutdown connects. The bot lane fight as well is happening off to the side in the other screen. As Karma pays the price for staying too long. Here comes Darius. He's looking to get crispy as well. 
as they walk right over a ward, but the fight finally stops as Hecarim and Syndra manage to take Vagar down. They used a lot for that fight. Two flashes, both of their ultimates, and a cleanse at that. Only problem is that, I guess, the Elise went back and got uh, Sork Shoes, which is not the standard for Elise. But um, you miss out on a lot of your early game damage. The main reason why you play Elise is because of that early game damage. Getting yourself a Fetish Codex is so nice in the early game. Rushing the boots means you're going for a little bit more of a utility route. You've kind of surrendered your early game damage and said, I'm not winning this early game. I'm playing for more of that mid to late game. I don't know if this is exactly what this Elise player, I, I can't really pronounce that name, Lar Lor Leroy? Leroy. Leroy. Something Leroy. Like, something like that. Maybe that's that's what, what his analysis is saying for himself. Might Ooh. take the blast cone over. Well, they're looking to set this up, but there's actually nobody in range to help get this cooking. As Hecarim does get spotted out. Elise, very knowledgeable of who's there, but Hecarim backing is going to create a really solid opportunity for him to kind of keep them guessing. Syndra going to rotate up to that top side, potentially set up some vision on this Rift Herald. But a ward will spot her out. And they're really trying to provide as many resources as they can to keep this Mordekaiser alive. Down about 30 CS or so. Down three kills as well. Having to go Zanya's arm guard first mm. to really try to <laughs> develop as much armor as possible. But potentially the wrong call considering an insane amount of AP coming out. But he could just be ulting Senna or Darius every single fight, and that yeah. might be kind of the call. Whenever I see a Seeker's first item, I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> That's not good. <laughs> it's you, rough. It's rough. You got to wait a little bit in order to get your actual Zhonya's, and it's not going to help you in the moment. I think that armor boots would have been a little bit better. Just a little bit, though. Just because, of course, an auto attack based champion. But you're seeing up here in the top lane that this Elise knows what's going on across this map. That there is a Herald off to the side that they do need to get, as well as a top lane turret. So maybe they want to do that. But wow. off screen, mid lane. That's Akram. going to be brutal. But Darius and Elise are looking to capitalize. They're making their way through that mid lane river. But Syndra and Hecarim are already home. They've locked the doors. The windows are closed, and Darius Elise coming up empty-handed, making their way back to their top side, and going to be clearing out the jungle. As this bot lane is starting to struggle, Hecarim catches them with their pants down. They don't even see him walk over the ward, but they actually Ooh. fight the Zaya. Even the TP comes out, and no the double way. kill comes out from Morgana. We criticize this in the draft, but coming up big is the next big thing. Oh. Getting the deuce deuce on the bot lane. Vagar TPs gets a kill for himself as well. Phenomenal play. One thing we always miss is the Morgana damage. It's so nice to see. We get to, we get to see that here where they immediately focus onto the two squishies, right? Morgana immediately ends up just doing so much damage to two targets that Hecarim goes, hey, what's going on? What are we doing? And he's, he's caught as well with his pants down. And he just runs right into a cage. It's never fun. I think they understand essentially ooh, what's going to be happening. Wait. Senna ult coming out here onto the Darius. They're looking to get this shutdown. Oh. Huge <laughs> flash. The man is an animal. Oh, my goodness. And now Cinder's going to be coming up. It's That's going to be the dragon secured as they focus oh. all their attention onto this top lane. But the man is cripsy. Cripsy. Crispy. But I, oh, my God, I called Cloud Drake. I'm going to walk away. I'm walking away. I'm, <laughs> While I'm he walking walks away, away I want to look at a replay of that last team fight just to see what Darius was able to do. You focus one target till you get five stacks, and you're able to pop off. He got it there, was not able to reset the ultimate, and that was his downfall. However, it's still all good at the end of the day as he's Darius. Get the five stacks onto the Karma, kill him. Get the five stacks onto the Zaya. Get her out of the team fight. The Syndra was the one. That was four targets that they had to send up into the top lane. And they ended up getting the dragon in the bottom lane. That's so worth for Darius. Yeah, they're going to be looking to try to contest this Rift Herald. Hecarim's going to be poking his head through. But not going to be really the target here. Four issues critical as they back off. One thing I really want to note is the keystones. Yeah. We've got three glacial augments <laughs> across the board. I didn't even see that. That might be aiding in the process here for Morgana. Able to... Can you talk to us a little bit about what glacial augment yeah. does for those yeah. that don't know? So if you auto attack 
then you just slow. That's just, that's kind of the basic of it. And we get to see that a whole lot. Whoa, in the mid lane, that's oh damage. Oh my that's god. That's damage. Oh my god. To commit your flash to that kill, the, do the double going over to issue is critical is so good. Snowman Slammers is having a tough time keeping up here as issue is critical is turning up the heat. They're going to be taking this top turret here. But still, wow, phenomenal early game from issue is critical. And we're really seeing them in a different light. Yeah, and you really only see Glacial Augment on very selective champions, and you usually don't see it on Vagar as well as Morgana, so I guess it's kind of experimental that they're trying out here, but definitely the slows have been working out a whole lot in a lot of scenarios where it, the slow comes in from Morgana, then immediately another slow comes in from Senna, and it's just slows on, on for days. You're also seeing the, the Vagar. He's, he's got the GLP for himself. That's an immediate slow right there, and then the auto attack comes in. It's another slow. It's just slows on slows. Yo, another GLP. Oh as well. my God! They really have slows, an, baby. They have an action plan going into this, and we kind of predicted this. We did say Snowman Slammers really solid at moving around the map. They've got an insanely fast comp that runs around, and issues critical doesn't. Guess what they do to fix that problem? You're going down to our level now. You're walking slow alongside us. That's going to be kind of the game plan, and the Cloud Drake's, the Cloud Soul, going to be the one that helps out. Oh, Zaya's in trouble, has to use the ult defensively, but Daria's still in trouble. Will the bleeds connect? No, the heal going to come in at the last second. Not the summoner spell, but rather just a little bit of juice coming yeah. into Zaya. Triumph. But um, five, 5k, 4k gold lead here mm -hmm. for issues critical. 15 minutes in with two dragons to their name. Snowman Slammers, what do they need to do moving forward? to really try to start to turn this around. I hate, I just don't like their items, man. Like, <laughs> Snowman Slammers, I'm looking at this whole comp. You got Mordekaiser, he's slowly building towards that Zanyas. He's so close, 0-3. And then you also have the Hecarim. Once again, he needs his Triforce. He only has the Sheen available. He also finished the Warrior, like you just pointed out. Usually, Hecarims will just literally leave their whole jungle item. They will get the red smite part of it, but they'll just leave the, the rest um, but there's going to be a fight. Maybe there, there wasn't. Uh, also in the bot lane, you, you have Azaya who hasn't finished her first item yet. This is all across the board, just kind of sloppiness. Yeah, and you can see, surprisingly so, an insane CS lead coming out from the Morgana. Elise, like you said, early game damage coming in crispy onto the Karma. The box going to connect and Zaya. No. Nobody puts Zaya in the box as she's able to get out of that one as the team will not collapse. Larai looking for the cocoon. No, actually doesn't connect, but the root from Zaya going to connect. And they're going to be looking to capitalize as they move forward, moving their vision line up as Darius splits off to the side and is able to get a turret mm. for this issue's critical roster as Mordekaiser pushes in that top wave. Yeah, it is a tier one tower at the end of the day, so it's just kind of like an extra wasted objective that you just need to take uh, as well. We just got, you, we, we, we've obviously got the pause on our screen. We'll see what ends up uh, coming out of that one. We got, we got game. Wow. We got, a, we got a series. So like I was saying, with the Snowman Slammers roster, mm. like you said, the itemization not really quite there, but what can they do in terms of trying to catch issues critical in a mistake? What can they do to try to create that scenario for themselves? They've got um, a couple of options, right? They they have, from what we've seen in the early game, we've seen the, the Syndra as well as the Hecarim come together and really perform an amazing mid jungle synergy. Uh, the communication that's going on between these two players, you can you can tell that they've been playing with each other just a little bit. Um, I don't know about solo queue, but definitely in these scrims, they've been practicing their communication a whole lot because of how on the same page they are together. Whenever Hecarim wants to go in the, on go in in the mid lane, you'll see the Syndra try and prep up her uh, spheres and try and land scatter the weak. But other than that, I don't know bot lane. Kind of un underperforming on their front. The Zaya not having her main main item yet is kind of critical for her. You've got the Mordekaiser. I don't even want to speak on that. Uh, and that's just kind of the roster. So you got to watch out for this mid jungle. Yeah, and and putting that Mordekaiser behind early really kind of set the tone because we saw last game it was really actually the Snowman Slammers jungle that was bullying the Orn mm -hmm. as the Mordekaiser was able to kind of get that free CS really go even in the lane, which created the opportunity to isolate targets later. But now you don't really have a tanky Mordekaiser. He's got Zanya's arm guard and some Merc Treads and no HP. Yeah. He's not going to be able to really do a whole lot other than ult somebody and then immediately Zanya. 
does. I got gotcha, you, psych. <laughs> and then just go golden right in the yeah. shadow realm. Yeah. Um, but again, this 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 snowman slammers, they really gotta re strategize in this game because they might be down a dragon soul twenty five minutes into the game. That's mm. that's gonna be brutal, especially um a cloud soul which is gonna allow Huge. ulties on ulties and create movement speed for a team that's already slow moving. On top of the glacial augments that they got cooking, so good. It's gonna be brutal against this fast moving roster. Um so they are kind of on a ticking time clock. I've seen it multiple times where Vagar is just so, so good in these squads. And we're starting to see it here in this match. Paired up with an Elise. I've been talking about the mid-jungle synergy over on Snowman Slammers. You see Eshu is critical as a squad. They've just got so much that's going right for them. The Darius top, he's a solo queue champion. Leave him on his island and he's going to do fine. And it's exactly what ended up happening up there in the top lane. The Elise just has to focus on these other lanes. And she's doing it perfectly. You see how many combos she's landing with the Vagar stuns. Uh, we haven't seen the Senna just yet in a team setting. But in the 2v2 match, they ended up 3v2ing. Right? With the Vagar TPing in. It's kind of cheating. It's 3v3. But still. It was really good to see them 2v2 into the 1v3. It was just so good out of uh, issues critical. So I don't, they just got they got the inner workings of a really good matchup. They're 4K up. They've got the two towers. They've got the two dragons. Soul is in their sights in 40, or at least the first, the third dragon yeah. in 40 seconds is going to be coming up after this pause, but... We're still figuring out. Yeah, we're still out. waiting. I think really the the reason why we're paused, ladies and gentlemen, is if you are kind of curious, um, the Elise actually disconnecting, not due to rage, of course, potentially something deeper than that happening for the Elise, potential internet issues or connect connectivity issues. Um, so we're just waiting to hear back and see if she will reconnect as we see kind of and break down live in front of you what we think this mid game is looking like for both these teams. Chad, I hope you guys are doing well at the end of the day. Uh, we were seeing the the viewer counts before this, and we're like, "Holy, we got, we got." Yeah, you guys, you guys, you guys are wonderful for supporting yeah. us. Yeah. Um, Even though there's a hundred thieves stream going on, hey, there's still that little bit of you that that like that like us, so we appreciate it for sure. I am wearing pants, but it's not dress pants. Uh, I'm sorry, I have to admit that. Why is Chad asking about our current pant option? You should be wondering about the itemization of this Mordekaiser. Chad, we're not I'll standing up. We're not standing. No, up. that's too lewd. We're not. We're not standing up. This is a PG-13 stream. In um, PG-13, they show pants though. So are we rated like G? I think we're G. For for gangster grandmas. <laughs> rated G G. For gangster grandmas. Potentially, potentially. Uh, Where did that come from? Out of my. Elise has reconnected, so the wait should not be too much longer. <laughs> sorry. I made myself laugh. I made myself giggle, chat. I'm sorry. I think chat might be just restless. They want to see an Elise dumpster. I want to see an Elise dumpster, room in the jungle, the jungle. We're going back to gameplay, ladies and gentlemen. We're going back to it. gameplay. Pants no. are going to have to be put on hold as we're back live in action. With this issue is critical roster pushing into the jungle, but they might catch themselves in a, between a rock and a hard place. What? Karma trying to maneuver around, but going to get absolutely dunked by this Woodland Darius. And is going to be looking to try to push in. And they've just got so much control of this bot side as Mordekaiser is trying to get some solo gold. Trying to take this turret down and probably will do so successfully. But in the process, ultimate going to have to be used on slot from the heck room to get out of a sticky situation. And the dragon looks to be as good as critical as they set up here and Snowman Slammers can't really answer back. Yeah, they're just gonna take this just very peacefully. Nothing too crazy. Of course, at this point, they've all got the items to take dragon. That's that's just kind of, kind of set in stone so they can take it very, very fast and then just go on to the next objective, which is maybe that mid lane tower as well. They do see that the Hecarim is off to the side. Only problem is, is that it's Hecarim. Ooh, he's actually going to get snared, and that's going to last kidding. 30 years as my kid goes to college as Hecarim gets out of that snare. The ultimate going to connect here for the Senna, but it's not going to be enough for Syndra to turn it back around. And this is looking rough as it's 7 to 14 with Whoa! 18 minutes in, and the long range snipe that somebody call a sniper. Senna is here to deliver as Uncle Derry's late to the dinner potluck 
as the turret does fall, having to collect the turret, uh, the minions that are left. But issue is critical is looking good. Yeah, definitely. Uh, we get to see them again take major, major objectives, and they ended up doing that right there. Was just one after the other. You get a kill, you've got to turn that into something. And that's what a lot of teams struggle to do. Is that they don't get a pick with a pick comp and then just translate it into nothing. You got to do something with it. And that's exactly what Issues Critical did right there. Two major objectives as well as a kill. Looking so good for themselves. Yeah, we're going to have to see how. Oh my god. You <laughs> using Vagar. your finger to point out something incredibly dangerous. Twin Shadows coming out from Vagar and Morgana. Are they listening to this Twitch chat? Are they listening uh, to me criticize their movement speed? Because uh, it looks like that's going to be the case as Hecarim decides to turn up. Karma gets the kill as Darius is going to be pinching him in there. Vagar is going to be hiding behind the box. The GLP connects. And Darius slim picking. Alley ooped over to Morgana. Vagar going to be taking that kill. Hecarim running for his dear life. Currently the only thing he does know how to do. And the connect here going to be for Mordekaiser. But the box going to knock them up into the Shadow Realm. They go. Darius is falling a little bit low. But he's able to kind of 1v1. Actually falling a little bit low here in the 1v1. But now Jeremy Chu going to be looking to get some damage onto the Morgana. Not going to be enough. As the vision line is spread out in across this entire bot side. And they're able to hold the control as issues critical is moving the, around the map. Once again, most of your resistances once you're in Mordekaiser Ultimate is gone. So that's why you saw so much damage go back and forth. It wasn't really the Mordekaiser getting any specific items. It was just, you know, he takes all of um, Darius's MR as well as armor. And then the Mordekaiser passive is just way too strong. Of course, he also has the haunting guys for himself, slowly building towards Leandri's. Just needed the Seeker's arm guard for the early game. Armor stat didn't really help him all that much, though. Which is still all good. He's still now starting to fix up his mistakes. Also in the mid lane, you're starting to see the Syndra come online. GLP as well as Leandri's Torment. So good for herself. It's a little bit more of a defensive um, Syndra build, but we're seeing a lot, of, a lot more AP champions take this type of route. Yeah, there's an incredibly heated debate from League of Legends finest, LS. He talks <laughs> about Morella and Omicron and Leandries and kind of the be-all, end-all answer is that if you're doing consistent damage, Leandries is the way to go. But if you're if you're looking to get some burst, Morella and Omicron is better in the long run if you're going to be bursting down champions. Now, Syndra, obviously the ultimate is used to burst, but still with the sphere is able to do consistent damage. There's also a threshold in which magic resist is as effective as it is. Mm -hmm. And I think the threshold was something like 50 magic resist is where after that point, Morella and Omicron kind of becomes worse than Leandri's Torment. Mm -hmm. um, but you're going to see a few our items come out here from Issues Critical. A couple of Merc Treads, but still, Leandri's going to be a solid item for Syndra. Yeah, as well, while we're on the topic of items, we see that the Elise, I guess LS would be going crazy right now because she has the Oblivion Orb. <laughs> and yeah, it's standard. It's standard on Elise, but you could also go Leandri's into Rallies, and it's still so, so good. It allows you to have a little bit of extra tankiness as well as AP damage, but... Let's just get off of items. We're, we're talking about items. Yeah, you know, 40 seconds remaining till that dragon decides to peek its beautiful head onto the rift. Issue is critical. Is setting up quite handily, getting some insanely deep vision, almost looking up the nostrils of Snowman Slammers, getting some deep pink wards. But still, issue is critical. Able to also use the twin shadows to scout out opposing players, which is going to be insanely important for not giving them any opportunities to get any leads back. And you can see here Snowman Slammers predicting Hecarim at his Krux. But some Vision also going to spot that out, and they're going to catch him face-checking into Misery. But he's actually going to go the other way. Cocoon going to land. That's going to be the snare. Going to be stunned up for 37 years. The Santa Ultimate wow. actually going to connect, but it's not going to do enough damage. Syndra using the box to her advantage, trying to get the position right and flashing away from the Morgana Snare. They're going to catch Syndra, at least, sorry, in a little bit of a rough place. Zaya using the ultimate. Mordekaiser now going to 1v1 with the Darius. The Snare going to connect onto the Syndra. She's going to be taken dangerously low as Mordekaiser does fall in the red pit. 
And that's going to clear the way for this Infernal Soul, which is going to be insanely critical for this issue, as they'll be able to use their ultimates and sprint away and slow down the enemy at the same time. And now we get to see a replay of that last team fight. I really liked how at least did not go over to really any target. Just allowed the Darius to be her backup as well. Mordekaiser thought the same thing was going to happen. Drag him into the ultimate and maybe actually try in 1v1 the Darius. But this time it did not happen. The Sterix gauge as well as the Triforce. Just so strong on this Darius player. He's just so fed right now. We talked about the potential lack of AD damage. Going to be coming out here from Issues Critical, but Darius proving us wrong, ready to do damage on a moment's notice. That's going to be at least she's in a little bit of trouble. Manages to hop over to the Blast Cone, and adios, amigos. Makes her way over to the Krugs. Going to take a quick parting gift. But now that's going to be Soul Man Slammers trying to create opportunities where they can. That's going to be another one, but the Flash connects. Ooh. Ultimate, not <laughs> enough to take out the Senna. And every time Snowman Slammers tries to take an inch, Issues critical, stops them dead in their track. Just a little bit longer is what Snowman Slammers need in order to actually start doing damage in these team fights. Now, the Triforce is finally built on the Hecarim, so he might actually start being impactful as well. We're starting to see a little bit more play out of the Zaya, but the slows are so strong, dude. Oh my god, the CC is never ending. The ultimate comes out from center. It's actually not going to be my finishing anybody off. Darius, he's looking hot, and he's going to be dunking. That's going to be one. The Fierce come out, and he keeps going. The double dunk onto the Zaya gets the double kill, and they're on an absolute rampage as they clean up shop, get in the three-piece, and now the Baron is their next target. The GLP from Vagar. What's next? You got the Twin Shadows. What's next? You have the Morgana. Exact same thing over on her front. So it's just so much slows. And the Darius just comes in and says, my cleanup time. Now Hecarim, though, he's got that potential. We are seeing it. Does he have the Flash available? No, he does have the Onslaught of Shadows, but he doesn't go in. Yeah, he's going to be completely zoned off here and slowed down by a Vagar. Who knew that was possible? Now the Twin Shadow is going to be chasing him down. The play-by-play -play is real. Baron buff now going to be going over to Issues Critical. The box connects. <laughs> he's going to have to onslaught his way out, but the stun still connects. And another <laughs> GLP is ready, cooked up, and good to go as now Hecarim finds himself so in a much, box. So, so much. much to dodge, so much to avoid. And Hecarim, the only thing he can avoid is imminent death. At that point, it's just a joke. Like, you're just laughing to yourself. And even at that, you've got a dead man's on, <laughs> on Vagar. I've been talking about items way too much in this oh game. My but God. it's just one after the other. Something comes up, and it just surprises me. But dead man's on Vagar. Who would have known that this would be the meta? Yeah, this is an absolute insane matchup. Both of these teams able to show off kind of why they're in this league, in the mm. Premier League, to be of all really showing up here when it matters most. An issue is critical is poised to take us to game three, and boy, do we love that silver scrapes. Oh, we definitely do. Oh, my god. God, can't be slowed. Going to be making it out there. The center ultimate going to connect, not going to be doing enough damage, as Elise here going to be almost grabbed by the Mordekaiser. Now that's going to be the turret falling here. But they might look to re-engage wow. huge wave in the bot lane. Darius can be able to clean that one up and get a turret for himself. Now only one outer tier turret remaining as they knock on the door of the inhibitor. Is anyone home? Issues critical is asking. It looks like no one is as they're starting to push in. And there's going to be no answers available for the snowman slammers. It's just so much damage going down to each of these towers. One in the bot lane as well as a couple in the mid lane. Ooh, they got to go in. That's going to be the onslaught. But the moment he goes in, he's got to get out of there. That's going to be the two-piece coming out for issues critical. As now the bot lane is on the retreat. Mordekaiser gets singled out. But look, there's a wild Darius. Now that's going to be the pullback. And the double dunk is good as Darius cleans up. 11-3-2. The man is a monster. That's it, the solo 2 Q team comp was the way to go because of this match. 26 wow. to 8, and a surrender. And a surrender, holy smokes. 8 no, to 26, you like you said. You don't see that. 13k gold lead here. Four issue is critical, and That's... I still got the Baron buff off to the side. I don't know where it is. Uh, where are you? Where are you? you got it. it's, like, it's, it's over. It's over here. Baron buff there is gone. Go. It's all good. <laughs> I'm the Baron buff now. Yeah. Um, 
Phenomenal play from Ishu's So great. Absolutely detrimental so to great. the composition that Snowman Slammers tried to put together. What happened during that game? I have no idea. The Darius just got... <laughs> I do have an idea. He's 11-3. <laughs> the man's walking up, blowing yeah. onto the Zaya, and she's absolutely <laughs> eliminated. The Elise dive to give the Darius the lane advantage is what snowballed that ultimately. This is what we were talking about. Is that it's going to be a jungle matchup, and it definitely was. In the early game, it was the Elise's job to get this Darius ahead, and she definitely did her job, then just escape that lane. Of course, she could have just kept going top lane. However, why? Just start farming for yourself, start getting mid, mid lane kills, start getting objectives, and she, de she did her job. In the famous words of Tyler1, jungle difference XD. XD. Jungle difference. Jungle difference. That's it. Jungle difference. It really is. I'm the better jungler. That's yeah. it. Sorry. Um, but on a more serious note, I think that they need to go back to the draft phase, really kind of rethink their strategy. We're going to have to see different bands really coming out here um, on the side of Snowman Slammers as they try to kind of re-strategize, rethink what it is that they're going to be doing. Um, but all we can do is wait. We got a series. Yeah, we, we got it. We, we have a series on our hands. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go to a quick break as we wait for these players to get back into lobby. They're going to be going over their picks and bands. We're going to take a quick water break. Get ready our throats for this next cast. But don't you go anywhere. We've got more Upsurge Premier League action. Stay tuned. We'll be right back.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Upsurge Premier League. We've got ourselves a series on our hand. Getting into game number three as Snowman Slammers loses to Issues Critical into that second game. And now it's down to the wire for both of these teams. Who do we have to be coming out on top? We got. I don't know. It's 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 really up in the air. We got an insane matchup. I just want to say welcome to the first uh, from the first stream. You guys ended up uh, coming over from or uh, the main channel hosted us uh, from the 100 Thieves broadcast. So if you guys weren't here, we see two teams, both one one apiece. So now we're into game three. And this is going to be crazy. This is going to be an awesome matchup. In game one, we saw an insane matchup come from Snowman Slammers. I believe they ended up winning game one. They did. Snowman Slammers yes. taking game one, using Graves Jungle kind of as their cornerstone yep. to win that match. But in the second match, GLP Vagar with GLP Morgana with two Twin Shadows yep. Vagar, uh, Twin Shadows three Morgana. Three Glacial Augments. Uh, three Glacial <laughs> Augments really playing the slow game, if you know what I mean. Um, and taking that dub quite single-handedly. Um, we're going to have to see how the draft looks in game number three as Pro Draft is ready to go. We're just kind of waiting soon. for our mark to kind of hop into that. But getting into this third game, it's really down to the wire with both teams' backs against the wall. But going off of a win, Issues Critical has the momentum. It's been that jungle matchup is what we've usually seen. The jungle matchup has really been... Something crazy, where in game one, it was the Graves. The Graves absolutely dominated the objective game, even though it, he was versing Jarvan. Uh, even though Jarvan got around in the early game and was really applying pressure, just wasn't able to put up the damage. Uh, in game number two, it was Elise versus Hecarim. <coughs> and in that match, the Jarvan player was playing Elise and just looked absolutely phenomenal. Was playing the Elise to the T, just uh, getting around in the early game. The only thing I didn't like is that they got Sork Shoes on Elise, second item. Or not second item. It was like literally blue smite, just the core blue smite, and then early game sorks. Didn't like that too much just because you needed a lot of burst. But it's all good. It still worked. You know what? A dub is a dub is a dub is a dub. You know what I mean? A dub is a dub. You take a dub, a dub, dub. you take a dub, right? So for them, they rub a dub dub them themselves <laughs> straight to a victory. Straight to a victory. And I have to say also, in the hands of that top laner, that Darius is quite prominent. Um, four issues critical. And we might look to see that top jungle synergy once again Maybe. heading into this third game. Um, Maybe. But uh, both of these teams still kind of getting into that pro draft, waiting for that to get started, like I said before. Um, even Elise had a, a few issues in that in that game. We had to take a pause for a little bit. So it might, it might just take some time to get okay. into that. But um, going into this third game, what are some things that you think um, – both teams might need to ban. Watch out for the first picks. Uh, you were talking about bans, and of course, the Graves got has to be banned. We have to watch out for the Morgana as well as the Vagar bans uh, to see if that's going to be massive. But we got to watch out for these first for this first pick as well as the response because this is where both teams have actually been struggling. Where the side that's playing on blue side will actually do something really nice with their first pick. They'll first pick a huge priority. The response, though, has been very lackluster. So we have to watch out to see if Snowman's, Snowman Slammers can respond with something kind of crazy here. Talking about the Darius. You're pointing out the Darius here. Yeah, I wanted to, to chime in for a quick second. Usually the Olaf is the thing that yeah. gets banned out here from Snowman Slammers. But adapting into this third game, leaving that Olaf. Ooh, that's weird. The Senna being first pick here allows for the Syndra and the Olaf to be secured here if, do they, if they do decide to take it. Two incredibly priority picks. But... Yeah. The Syndra wasn't really working last game. No, it really wasn't. Um, in a lot of cases, you saw the Syndra build tanky, and I think that was a major bad point in their comp is they didn't have enough tanks, right? So she was forced to build defensive, forced to go Leandries, and that's not what you want to see out of your Syndra. But we do have the first pick, Senna, which is not weird. It's not weird whatsoever, but they could have saved this MF pick because what ends up happening is if you know that Senna's going ADC, we have seen her go support in a lot of these games. You could just save your misfortune for that third pick, pick another priority, but Snowman Slammers, they're looking at the Jarvan, they're looking at the MF, they're saying this is the winning team comp. Yeah, and it might be on the backs of Leona. They might try to secure that in this first draft phase. The Lee Sin going to be picked up here, and I'm not really sure how this fares into the composition. We'll have to see how it works. The Jarvan didn't work out. Four issues critical in that first game, but on the backs of Elise, it was really efficient, and we'll have to see how this early game decides to pan out here for issues critical. I think both junglers are capable of giving that early game pressure. We'll just have to see. And Mordekaiser, smart drafting from Issues Critical, taking it away from Uncle Derry. Yeah, playing the Elise, you would expect him to go to another early game jungler, and Lee Sin 
fits that category perfectly. You could definitely turret dive on Lee Sin and get out with ease. Same thing in the top lane if you want to try and prioritize that top lane matchup. We know that this top laner on Issues Critical is really good at... Um, <laughs> Sorry, the GP threw me off. <laughs> yeah, the GP is uh, going to be locked bit. in here for Uncle know. Derry. And that's going to provide some global pressure. I don't really know how the matchup goes into Mordecai, but I think He's GP... He's sacrificing that lane, dude. Uh, what do you mean? <laughs> He's saying, I don't like landing face. That's yeah. what the GP player is saying. <laughs> Uncle, Uncle Derry saw that last game and was like, I just don't want to deal with it anymore. Let's just, let's just sacrifice the whole entire lane matchup, wait for level 13, and then I'll start to pop off. Yeah. <laughs> The Tom Kench here being taken away from Issues Critical. They're not going to be able to take that combo into the bot lane. And we'll have to see. I'm looking for a potential support pinches here to remove that combo. Syndra going to be taken away. I think that's still quite a fair pick. But I do see the Morgana taken away. Yeah. Smart banning from yeah. Snowman Slammers. But I'm looking at a, a Rakan, Nautilus, or Leona to be banned here from Issues Critical to avoid yeah. that Misfortune combo. Could be really good. Uh, the Leona is definitely the one that stuck, stuck out for me. Just because... The misfortune Leona combo is something that's nasty. We all know. We all know that uh, that combo is pretty crazy. But one thing that kind of curious uh, makes me get a little bit curious is where's the GP going? Could be going into the top lane. Also, could be going into the mid lane because I know that Tobias Fate, the GP one trick, loves to play in the mid lane just because he thrives a lot more in a shorter lane. Can't really get dove as often just because the jungler is just so close to mid lane all the time, and. GP can thrive in a matchup, in a winning matchup. So we'll have to see what's picked in the mid lane. The cast is going to be the last ban for Issues Critical, really pitching that Support. mid lane pool yes. for Snowman Slammers. As Snowman Slammers answers back by pinching the support pool. We'll yeah. have to see how this pick comes out. Oriana, that's, that's going to be decent enough to combo in here, put the ball onto Jarvan, get a delivery system going, and have MF absolutely shred through that front line. I don't know who's doing the drafting for Snowman Slammers, but it's just kind of universally known that you save your counter pick for the last slot. You could have picked support right here. I don't think that the support was a is a massive counter pick priority unless <laughs> Snowman Slammers are, you know, two billion IQ. Oh. But versus Oriana, you've got a plethora of champions, and Vladimir is going to be that champion. Wow, issues critical is getting the draft of a lifetime. They take away Uncle Derry's top lane pick. They secure the Senna, and now they're even going to be counter picking into Snowman Slammers. We'll have to see if the ball delivery system is as good as it sounds. But it's currently not Old Faithful, as the Ash is the last thing potentially going to be locked in here as the ADC. But the Nautilus switch up, and boy do I love me some Nautilus. That's going to be my go. champion of choice. There you go. And we'll have to see what this last pick is here. And I'm 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 thinking the Leona. There's like nothing yeah. else. There's nothing else. There's, so there's nothing. The only reason why you would pick Oriana here, just out of the bat, off the bat, is because his name is a command attack. The enemy's name is Command Attack, and you could just put him onto the Orianna, and he'll do completely fine. So maybe that was the mindset. Just put him onto something crazy. You were, uh, yeah, you're looking for it. I'm also face palming a little bit. The Terra is going to be coming through. I don't know. I don't know. Bro. It's not instant CC. It's Bro. not. Bro. It's not. Yeah, I don't know. I like. I get it. Me too. You might be a little bit afraid. It's I get so it. Passive. You're concerned. You're worried about this game. You want to take the dubski. But unfortunately, listen, maybe the draft call was to pick Tarek. And maybe you're really looking forward to that security mm. to survive and thrive in the team fights. But I think you're asking for a little too much security. I think the Leona <laughs> pick really was the call here. And it's going to, like, man. Oh man, I was just, I'm just so frustrated. I just the Leona guarantees engage alt and then Jarvin and then misfortune GP as well. Yeah. You have so many yeah. tools. Why not give yourself more tools? You're basically saying we're gonna get engaged on, we're gonna get engaged on hard, and we're just gonna try and defend as best as possible. Because <laughs> like, like you don't go in with Tarek and you're just like, yo, I'm gonna Tarek all bro. Listen, I get it. It's gonna be great for dives. You have sure. the potential to survive. Sure. Vladimir alt comes out. You're kind of countering it to be honest. If you can, if yeah. you can time it effectively. Yeah. But the bottom line That's is that Leona. don't you want to be proactive? <laughs> don't you want to be the one that engages? 
I feel like I'm, I'm a car salesman. Yeah. Like, don't you want Leona to be the one that takes it for you? Um, I want to be. Le- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I want Leona. Um, maybe I'm just frustrated because I'm a caster and I wanted to predict it so hard because <laughs> I didn't get my pick. I'm a sad caster. Um, <laughs> to be fair, though, Tarek still isn't like he's not S tier, yeah. but he's not D tier. Like he's yeah. not the worst possible support in this scenario. Yep. But in the lane matchup, Nautilus is going to absolutely flex so hard. Um especially if he's going to be looking for those hooks. It's just going to be a tough matchup, especially since Tarek needs to get those autos. And yeah. if if once Nautilus goes in, he's guaranteed a hook. Like you're not you're not your initial reaction isn't to turn around and start beating on the Nautilus. Your initial reaction is, "Oh crap, I got hooked. I'm snared. I'm slowed." Mm. And now misfortune's doubling up slowing me down again. You're you you want to get out of there. Tarek's not going to turn around and auto for those heals. So that bot lane, I'm predicting going to be rough for issues critical. The big difference that I mean, I, sorry, for Snowman Slammers as Nautilus and Senna is going to flex. The big difference that I see between these uh, between Tarek and Leona is that Leona has Zenith Blade. That's about it, right? She has the amazing engage, a little bit of a root whatever. The thing that Tarek has is a flash root. So he can charge it up in a, in the bush and then flash onto your Stop. target. Yeah. Um, and that's going to be the, the major uh, difference is that there's no... It, the longer CC out of Liana would have been great, but Tarek has just a little bit of a stun, and you know, into bullet time, it can be good. It can be really good if, if given the right possibility, but we'll have to see. I mean, this is the same scenario that we were faced with in game number one where I was like, Graves is not going to do well. You said we'll see. Same thing. I'm going to say we'll see with this Tarek pick. Yeah. Um, we, we know a little bit more about this Tarek pick now, but still, we got to look over at these comps. we got to see what exactly they got going on. Yeah, Mordecai's are here. I'm kind of thinking about it. I'm not like it could go. It's probably going to be going into the top lane, like yeah. almost like 99% sure. But kind of where my thoughts lie is, I was thinking about Naraxis, the top laner for issues critical, and I was thinking about that last game, and I was mm. comparing in my mind to the Orn, and I was saying to myself, this guy likes to play aggressive. Oh yeah, this guy likes to get into people's faces, and he likes to do damage. Mm. Mordecai does none of those things. Yeah. He he has to rely on the pull, and that's his big thing, right? In order to get into range of you, he's got to land the pull. He's got to, you know, land this Q. He's got to drag you into the, into the, the realm. It's just not the fun scenario. But you guys can see our faces. Once again, we can see the team comps on our screen. So just to tell you, issue is critical. They're on the blue side today. They're going to be playing, I guess, Mordecai's are in the top lane. They're going to be playing Leeson in the jungle, Vlad in the mid lane, with Senna and Nautilus on support. The one big thing I see in this comp is that Senna is not going support. We've seen it throughout the past two games where they shove Senna into the supportive role with an APC as the... Uh, ADC or a tank, really. Yeah. I think this could still work if you it want can. my honest opinion. Like Doran Shield, um, start for Nautilus. It's actually going to be gross, like disgusting. Like I'm almost disgusting. shuddering just thinking about it because, yeah. like, he's just going to be so innately tanky. Starts hook first, shield second. Yeah. He's going to have that level two of a lifetime, mm-hmm. especially going to be able to stop those um, auto attacks from really starting to layer on. Because ultimately, currently, the state of Senna, while prior, um to 10.4 she's played a lot more i think even 10.3 she's played a lot more uh of of like the, the adc role yeah but now she actually just does more damage as a support so there's no reason why they shouldn't just funnel True. everything into nautilus um and having that melee matchup is beneficial especially since we saw that in the tom kench match um where it was tom kench senna up against Brom Aphelios. Oh, my memory is pretty good. Um, and it, it went well for Tom Kench. It went <laughs> yeah, well. Aphel- it you'd did. think Aphelios would be going in, but they kept up in CS. But we'll have to see how that kind of pans out. Yeah. Uh, whenever you ask a, or you look at a basic League of Legends comp, you would expect that the ADC would go into the ADC role. Not in this one. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. Riot. Not if today. You, if you told me five years ago that ADCs would now be supports, Ugh. I would have laughed right in your face. If you ha! told me, if you told me Nautilus was going to be averaging 100 CS every 10 minutes, <laughs> I would have laughed at you. Yeah. If you told me that Morgana was going to build GLP, Twin Shadows, and then Zanyas, I would have laughed at you. Um, but now we're in a new era. Maybe the greatest era, make make, make Riot great again. Yeah, dude. Um, but I'm really enjoying these games, so I can't really complain about the center support. So true. We talk a lot about issues critical. Now we gotta make that transition over to Snowman Slammers. What they've got going on 
In the top lane, they've got GP. In the jungle, they have Jarvan. In the mid lane, they have Orianna. Bot lane, Misfortune, Tarek. We've been talking a lot about this, but the one thing that screams out to me is AoE. This team's got a plethora of AoE ultimates, which makes this so exciting. Yeah, we're going to have to see if they're going to be able to execute because that's going to be the name of the game, I think, for Snowman Slammers. If you land your stuff, you're going to go home with the dub. If you miss your stuff, you don't go home with the dub. So it's really okay. going to be the be-all, end-all win condition. But uh, we're going to be taking a quick word from our sponsor one last final time. Have a look at Sector 6 Apparel. Started with a vision. A vision of quality. A vision of uniformity. We took the time to create something familiar yet refreshing. Something with a bit of change. Designed to fit any brand's unique vision. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed that beautiful ad from Sector 6. That lit, swag <laughs> looks absolutely oh, insane. I got lit. Yeah. That was a good we got song. yeah, that behind was a good the scenes. Song. Oh, God. Behind the scenes we were definitely <laughs> enjoying the track that they had so graciously played for us. But now we are just moments away from the game. Both teams down to the absolute wire. If you are a Snowman Slammers fan, this is now the time. Say it. This is now the time to support your favorite team. But if the issue is critical for you, now is the time to speak about it. Yell it through the chat. Spam whatever it is that you want to spam to support your team as now is the last and final opportunity in this best of three. Snowman slammers critical. Like I can, yeah. <laughs> I can just hear it. I can hear it in my head. Uh, uh, what do you think about kind of moving forward as we start into this level one? We haven't really seen too many invades. Predictions going into this invade, no invade. Nah, nah. Maybe, maybe one from issues critical though. Maybe. They've got they got the Nautilus. They got the Nautilus hook. The one thing that that sticks out to me is the supports. How much CC and setup do the supports have for an invade? Nautilus has got the hook, of course. Over on the other side, though, no, they got Snowman Slammers. But I think we got to introduce these teams, man. We got to introduce this game as the final game. Let's get into it. That's going to be issues critical. Naraxis on the Vladimir Larai on the Lee Sin command attack on the Mordekaiser mid. Spaghetti, that's spicy. CX44XD1111 OVO on the Senna <laughs> and the next, bex, next big. I screw up the Nautilus, Aww. but not the Senna. The next big thing on the Nautilus. And over on the red side, we got the Snowman Slammers. They ended up winning that last game. They can try and do that here. They won two games ago. My bad. Maybe they can try and win this game off of momentum and sheer will. Uncle Derry in the top lane. Eric in the jungle. We got Chaos in the mid lane. Jeremy on ADC supporting him. It's going to be magic. Minions have spawned. So, like we predicted, no, no really uh, strong invade here coming up from either side. But something that I did kind of hint at in the pick and ban... And I was kind of like, eh, it's 99% sure Mordekaiser's in the top. Guess what? It's always the 1% that kills the germs. Or sorry, rather, doesn't kill the germs. Command attack going to be going up against the Orianna here in the mid lane. And Vladimir going up against Gangplank in the top lane. And that matchup, I'm not exactly sure who would benefit. Yeah, I don't know. It's a farming matchup. Uh, and I feel like that's why they put the Vladimir up there. Is because they realize that Mordekaiser is going to struggle just a little bit in the early game versus the poke that GP offers. The thing is, is that the sustain coming through, through from both of these champions is going to be immense up here in this top lane. Corrupting Pot coming through for GP. This means a little bit extra uh, usage of his Qs as well as his oranges once he reaches that level 3 point. However, looking at this bot lane matchup and the Senna. Senna and Nautilus, they're just pushing this. Yeah, and I think one of the things that's going to aid in this CS battle here for Nautilus, being a Nautilus main myself, the, the passive here from the auto going to be executing minions in a very effective manner, which is yep. going to allow 
for a much better farming experience as well. Running the Doran's ring into the Riptide is going to create easier farming experience. He didn't start with the hook, which is going to create this experience that the alcohol was going to be rough to handle, but the level two is going to connect. The Ignite comes out, and so does the Rue, wow. and the first blood goes right over to the Senna. Going to be starting things off hot. She's, looking, she's going to be looking here for the second kill, but they're actually going to go back oh. and forth. That's going to be so close to Minion, no. and the double kill goes over to the Misfortune, starting a off ha misfortune coming into this one with two kills is so good it has the lane advantage for herself can deny a little bit of xp if she shoves this one in has to go back to base has a 150 gold shutdown on herself she is sitting so nicely there wow I'm gonna actually gonna need to see a replay give it to me let's do, let's see. I know you guys have it you guys cooked it up let me see what happened there and break it down for us. Why yeah, sure. let's look at this. So Nautilus with a really nice alcove play. We we meme a whole lot about the alcove, but they use it for a lot of disengage, and that's exactly what the next big thing ended up using it for. But now we get to see the minion wave and the size versus a Senna is never, never fun. No confidence. I don't want to say no confidence, but minimal confidence from MF Force the Flash. She goes back to base, gets three Doran shields. Yeah, maybe the flash was a little bit extra, but a bit. securing the two-piece with the three Doran's blade, coming back with a handful of swords, not able to carry them all in your back pocket. We're going to be able to do quite a bit of damage here and potentially even sustain up against this bot lane. But yeah. still, I don't think Senna and Nautilus are down and out just yet. You, you, you can really underestimate the power of an absolutely nutty hook yep. that can come out of nowhere, and the next big thing could really surprise you. With the hex flash as well, Gonna keep things fresh and keep them on their toes in that bot lane. Senna still has her flash available though, however, which is a little bit interesting. But in the mid lane, we're seeing a gank come through here. Yeah, the slow gonna be connecting the nice. flash, gonna be moving out of the flag and dragon. They're just trying to poke their way through just a little bit more as the Mordekaiser has to back off. And the CS lead already starting to cook up here for the Orianna, but J4 moving out of that bot side means Nautilus and Senna have to play a bit safer. Yeah, and Nautilus is going to be building double Doran's rings. Oh, so in the baby, mid lane. but the return. Lee Sin's coming to party. Ignite comes out onto the Orianna. They're looking to clean this up. They're dangerously oh. low, and the Lee Sin connects, and the Sonic Wave is good. So we're seeing different scenarios happen across the map. Over for issue is critical. They've got their mid jungle rolling. Oh, he's not going to do it, though. Okay, but in the bot lane for Snowman Slammers, they've got their bot lane going absolutely crazy so we've got two different fronts on both sides it's gonna be kind of interesting how it pans out i really do respect kind of pushing in the misfortune not really giving her many opportunities to double up get a lot of that long range damage they're gonna be looking to get engaged here with the stun but it really is just trying to zone them off the wave and senna is able to trade that with some insane damage of her own and now they're gonna be pinching in onto this lee sin tarik's gonna be making this way but the juke the fancy footwork, Tarek's gonna be looking to cook up. The Ignite comes out, and the Ward hop over, but there's no Blast Code. The Flash over, the double up not gonna connect, and now Senna's in trouble. The Hook connects, and the Flash out of the stun. Now, Nautilus in trouble. The Root connects, but he's not gonna be lucky this time. He's trying to make it out alive. And now, Jamie Chu on the Misfortune with three kills to her name, and now maybe a dragon. Yeah, a dragon would be massive here. The mountain dragon coming in first. This is exactly what we ended up seeing there in the first game as well for Snowman Slammer, Slammers. Eric knows how exactly to play this objective game, and he's gonna play it perfectly. Definitely gonna do that here with no help. You don't really need the help as well. Maybe a plate gonna go down in the bot lane as well. MF going back to base with so much gold though. Man attack getting a little bit of deep vision here against the Jarvan, just trying to scout out that information. Knowing well enough that it's really all about that dragon control, so getting that deep vision gives him the opportunity. Now, GP's in a little bit of trouble. But Mordecai's are just going to head back to lane, rather catch the wave than spend a pointless amount of time ch carrying, chasing, sorry, a GP that can just get out of any situation in this early game. But really, so far, really close. The gold differential is really just 100 gold. But I did want to mention, with the Mountain Drake taken here for Snowman Slammers, that means we don't have a Mountain Soul on our hands. No, we don't. And that would be really good for both of these squads. Just a little bit of extra HP. For any squad, it would be really good. 
but it's either going to be the ocean or the wind dragon. So we got to take a little bit of a coin flip on that. Next dragon is going to be the infernal. It still lose that one out as well, or cancels that one out as well. I'm kind of curious if this MF build is going to be uh, very beneficial to herself because she rushed the boots. I know that you do that on like old vein, but like <laughs> not here. <laughs> yeah, and you're going to see Nautilus going to be running that double double Doran's ring, going to be able to do a little bit of extra damage on that Riptide, and that's going to be ex exceptionally key as they get into these little fights and scuffles in the bot lane. Senna going to be allowing to re-engage here. Misfortune in a little bit of trouble. That's going to be the auto that stuns her up. <laughs> and Nautilus is just going to facilitate the damage here as he goes back in and out. But the ult comes out. And the flash is going to keep Nautilus alive. With the GP ult able to try to negate some of that space. And a kill in the mid lane. Releasing finds Orianna. Creating the even out kills in 3-3 three three from both these teams. This is one of the advantages to having two perspectives. Is that we get to catch things that are off camera usually and not jump. Like how direct camera does it. But anyways, I really do like how uh, Lee Sin is now prioritizing his the main lanes. He sees his bot lane not struggling too much. But sees them as that supportive lane. And is now saying, I'm going to go to these other lanes. I got to prioritize the top lane. Got to prioritize the mid lane. He's definitely doing that. Allowing himself to get a kill, which is awesome. But this is the this is the difference between having your jungler take the kill as well as your mid laner. If your mid laner takes it, we know that this can be Ooh. secured. But if your jungler fight takes a little bit in the ball lane. Sorry to interrupt. There we got go. a fight on our hands here. But they're looking like they're going to be disengaging. The double up yeah. not going to connect. The TP is coming in. And here comes the Vlad. He's looking to party. Tardix in trouble. Tries to keep himself alive. Is there enough damage? Yes, it is. Senna's going to be taking that kill. And that's going to be two for one here. As Jarvis looking to party. Oh! Yes, all three of them. The man is a monster. Now they're looking to clean up. Here comes Mordekaiser. He's looking to try try to get whatever he can here, but that's going to be a huge advantage here for Snowman Slammers as they get two with a combo. We were looking for the bullet time and it wasn't available sadly, but we got to retake a look at that. Let's look at the analytics of that team fight because it was so much damage that went back and forth. The immediate response of the engage from Snowman Slammers was so good. Got the Nautilus low. The TP though coming in was so good. The Vladimir coming in with the Hemo Plague as well as just so much damage. Donating the kill over to the main ADC as well. But Jarvan coming in with the Cataclysm to get these two kills was just so incredibly good as well. Misfortune getting two kills for herself at the end of that team fight was so Ooh. amazing. But in the bot lane is a fight. Yeah, it's going to continue to have non-stop party action. But Jarvan just rearing his head in, trying to get a little bit of... Momentum here, but then he's just gonna back off. He might look to re-engage here. Leeson's gonna be making his way down. That's gonna be the ulti that comes out. They're looking to engage. They know Leeson's on the way, but Senna is able to find a kill for herself. Tarek's in Watch trouble as he gets taken out here. Leeson's looking to party. He's got thrift, but the TP's coming in from GP. They're looking to fight the extended fight. Oriana's coming in as well. Nautilus gets taken out. And GP joins a little too late as the party is already over. But Oriana rearing her head off in that side bush. They know that something's coming. A huge ulti. That's going to be the Zanyas. And Leeson's looking to party here as he tries to do something. But something is also equal to nothing. He hopes. He hops in. And the turret takes out Oriana. The one for one. But it's not worth. A snowman slammers is able to get potential turret damage here but still a sloppy fight from both sides. All across the board. Like you said, it was a sloppy fight. So it was kind of even at the end of the day. The Lee Sin grabbing a kill for himself allows himself to go back to base, get the warrior. Let's look at replay. Once again, we get to look at a replay of that team fight because there was just so much that happened initially. It was a lot of engage coming through. The Jarvan not really knowing what to do, but he came in for that counter gank as well. He starts to back off for himself and then engages once the GP finally comes in. It was really good for that G player as well, but we're seeing a little bit of a replay, in, or not a replay, but the actual game itself in the bottom left. There was, there was a fight, but the Lee Sin now played this like an absolute god. The Q was awesome. Ended up kicking to try and survive, and it wasn't enough. The GP ultimate was just too strong. Yeah, the two for two gonna be Kind of what happens here, going even here, but Snowman Slammer still has the momentum. They've got the gold, they've got the kills, and they've got that first dragon under their belt, looking for number two as issue is critical. Is looking for bot and mid priority with Oriana in the top side. Not going to be able to join, and the Rift Herald also available 
here for the Lee Sin, and I actually think it might be smart to use it. The timer is running a little low here on the Lee Sin. They might have to rotate to that top side, but Dragon's still currently the number one objective as both teams look to reset a little bit. We're also going to be seeing a top lane. A couple of plates going to be going down up there, which is really, really good for Orianna. A little bit of extra gold going into her pocket. So she maybe gets a lot add on to the lost chapter that she already has, but this is kind of like that, like that slow game for Snowman Slammers. Right, they're, they're constantly rotating, they're constantly trying to get these objectives. They're going to be getting an Infernal Dragon as well. It's just adding on to their collection. Which just means one step's closer oh to the soul. Oh my god, that's going to be the Flash coming out here. He puts Misfortune in the Shadow Realm. He's looking for a kill here. Exactly, he wants to shut down Gold, but the Shadow Realm is about to come up. He gets the kill, and they're able to turn this around now. That's going to be the engage here from Nautilus onto the GP as he TPs in, but he's biting off too much, and that's going to be another kill going over to Senna for the Tarek. And now Lee Sin's looking for that last kill onto the GP. He flashes, oh. but the Sonic Wave whiffs. And Jarvan EQs out, and it's good. And the dragon also going over to Snowman Slammers. Oh, he's actually still he's not, looking. Yeah. He's not done just yet, as the Nautilus is actually going to be showing up now. Wait, he EQs in. That's going to be the GP ult. They're actually looking to re-engage here. Clean. Jarvan actually is going to fall, and Lee Sin's hopping over. He's just poking his head. He's going to take a little bit of damage. Off to the side, Vladimir kills Oriana in the top lane. This is a Damn game if I've ever seen one. We're seeing both sides of the map go absolutely crazy. The Vladimir in the top lane, just basically the Forgotten Soul, ended up getting first tower off screen. We actually saw a little bit of a... Uh, we saw a second perspective of it in the bottom right left, if you guys ca caught it. But he got that first tower, plus the two plates that were coming along with it, plus a little bit of extra damage onto that tier 2 tower, plus a kill onto the Orianna. Now 0-4-1. Not the best display of action that we've seen, Chaos. You know, one thing that's super important to note is on the backs of that Vladimir play, we do have to remember that Lee Sin rifted top side and then headed down to that dragon side to try mm. to secure that dragon. Mordekaiser was already there a little bit early. The dragon was secured, and then the battle began. Yeah. But still getting that early top lane turret is going to open up a lot more win conditions here for issue is critical. Mm. But they're going to need to capitalize and try to get this mid side bot side secured because they're losing out on these dragons there definitely are and if it doesn't fix soon then something's going to happen but in the ball in another fight Ooh, that's gonna that be the so attempt nice. to get out he's gonna be trying to get out as best as he can and the hex tech proto belt not gonna be enough to get away from the nautilus he's gonna be cooking up some ap damage sometimes it is but sometimes it's not <laughs> <laughs> Rift Herald here now going to be the target of Issues Critical's affection as Vladimir and Mordekaiser double team it with Misfortune and Tarek focusing on that bot side turret. I'm also kind of confused and very curious. What is this Recur bow on Mordekaiser going to turn into? Maybe a Gwinsu's Rage Blast? But <laughs> I don't know. Definitely a couple of possibilities on that front. Maybe chat. You guys have an idea. But it's all good as another Herald going to be going over. Four issues critical, I believe. That's going to be a lot. I do want to... I mean, we've been talking a lot about itemization. Like, probably more so than any any game I've ever seen. But it's worth it. We've got Executioner's Calling yes. on Jarvan. And we've got first item Zonyas into Spirit Visage on Vladimir. Yes. And I'm kind of just curious what's happening in this game. I don't know. I'm just kind of curious. You and I think is that Nautilus and uh, Vlad switch builds. Yeah, maybe. They just they had Blitz <laughs> open and they, they swapped it back over. I, I, don't, I don't know. It happens. Um, but still very, very interesting to see the itemization that comes out, and they're trying to respond as best as they can. I really would have liked the Nautilus to build a bit tankier. I mean, I understand what the Hextech Protobelt is looking to accomplish, but you're really, you want to be the front line for your team, right? Lisa's yeah. not going to build tank. Vladimir is going to take some time to get there, and Mordekaiser, while he is going to single somebody out, somebody's got to soak the damage, and yeah. your Hextech Protobelt is not going to help in that process. No, it's definitely not. And we've seen it in a bunch of these fights where... Usually, when you see a Nautilus solo in a lane, it's like, all right, you can't really kill him unless you have a couple of members, right? Even with MF and Jarvan together, you're like, eh, maybe. But he just got bursted down. Why is that? He's got two Doran's Rings and a Proto Belt. So you're kind of starting to see the effect of it. Um, but across the board, it's pretty standard for, for Russ of these itemizations. We're going to have to see what happens next as this Goosebumps book continues to be a page-turner from both of these teams. 50 seconds remaining. 
until that Cloud Drake spawns. And you can see both teams getting into their battle stance. And that's going to be Jarvan wow. rearing his head over. Mordecai's just looking to party. Puts him into the Shadow Realm. And he might actually be able to take him out here. Jeez. And that's going to be a solo kill coming out from the Mordekaiser. Securing what seems to be potentially issues critical's first dragon of the game. Taking out that jungler is going to feel pretty good. You have a little bit of a temper when you play jungle where you get restless because you haven't done something for so long, and I think that's exactly what happened with Jarvan. Let me just, let me just EQ over this well to try and scout this out. But that's your escape. You don't want to do that. Come on, Jarvan. You know a little bit better than that. So you ran into a Mordekaiser, and it's just not a fun scenario for yourself. And you now get to snowball if your issue is critical. You get to take the dragon as well as a little bit of pressure in this bottom. Dragon here gonna be the focus for issue is critical. As obviously Snowman Slammer is not able to answer, but still any team now is up for grabs when it comes to the Dragon Soul, and that momentum is gonna be good. The GP ult comes out, they're looking to try to connect. Tarek gonna be leading the charge, he's looking to try to get a stun, but they decide to back away as they're not gonna be going in that deep into the enemy side, fighting off too much. They can't really chew. Yeah. We'll have to see now the reset. No objective really up. Baron going to be up. But no team really takes it this early into the game. So we might just try to see some setup here to try to take top turret or mid turret from Snowman Slammers. Or from Issues Critical to get rid of this bot lane turret. As the mid is quite wide open for him. Yeah, they're just going to keep the Mordekaiser here in the mid lane alongside Senna. Senna just going to be farming the souls as best as possible. Vladimir has been having a blast up here in this top lane. Just been farming his own heart out as well. Might run into a Jarvin. But he's just scouting out the area. Uh, you're talking about this bot lane turret as well. And I don't think this is a priority for issues critical. Even though it would be a really, really nice little bit of gold. We got the GP down there. Can be kind of hard, but a bush camp, fanatic bush. Ooh, he sees him. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> Tarek is going to be staying alive, but Naraxis is going to take him, gives himself a kill. I just thought of that meme as soon as he Kek walked w. up. Oh, no, no, oh, no. no. That's not Kek w. Um, and uh, <laughs> Tarek going to be in a little bit of trouble here. No opportunity here to take the Baron, of course. One kill. The support specifically not really going to amount to anything, but still a good kill. We get to look at a replay while we just wait for this Baron to die out. Let's look at that team fight just a little bit more closely. The initial engage onto the Senna, which is why just the, the Taric engage isn't the absolute best. And you see it right there. You need a little bit of time in order to get the stun off. And it was just so much snowballing to go down from there of course we ended up seeing the Tarek just survive for a little bit longer but in the back line what's going on there's a Vladimir popping off just gets one more kill as well onto the GP the ace coming through issue is critical they've got all of their members available ironically Tarek was really the only saving grace for snowman slammers yeah. he was able to 3v1 for an extra 10 <laughs> seconds which really created the space to try to fight that's true but unfortunately snowman slammers when they're spread, they're a lot worse. But as a team, they're a lot better. Um, and the engage from Jarvan really started to separate the fight into kind of two halves. And Snowman Slammers does not want that. They no. want one coordinated effort. <clears throat> whereas the issue is critical. It's looking for those 1v1s or 1v2s or 2v1s where they can separate the team and dissect the front line. And now is finally that point in the game where you could start looking at these little useless objectives and start taking them. The objectives that you thought weren't really that huge of a priority and one of them is this bot lane tower and they get to now go down here add a little bit of extra pressure while the dragon is going to start to come up as well uh, but after this you got to start looking at these main lanes you got to look at this mid lane start cracking down some inhib inhibitors boys because you got the baron you have a lot of extra pushing power you gotta start going for stuff yeah it's gonna be interesting to see how issues critical poises their lanes gp Going to be catching that bot side wave, but Vladimir looking to answer. Dragon going to be the first target, very obviously so. Putting us at an even 2-2 for both teams. I think Snowman Slammers would be kind of dead to rights if the Dragon Soul was for issues critical. But getting Mountain and Inferno really going to give them kind of the benefit of the doubt that they could make it through this game. Yeah. But bounties across the board for issues critical going to be really rough to kind of keep in mind as Snowman Slammers is trying to play the defensive game 
killing any one of these members is going to net some hefty pocket change. Yeah, it would be really good if Issue is Critical can get a pick here. This is exactly what they're looking for. Once you have the Baron available for yourself, you're looking for, of course, towers. But you're also looking for picks. Oh, baby, Jarvis is looking to cook up here. That's going to be the misfortune. And Nautilus is falling dangerously low, but the shield's going to keep him alive. And the longer he stays alive, the longer Issue is Critical has to collaborate their efforts. And Snowman Slammers gets one, and they have to be on the retreat. It's not a fun situation to be in when you're Jarvan and you don't have your main damage. Of course, he has his Cinderhulk available for himself. He's got the Stinger for whatever reason, as well as the Executioner's Calling, and it's not doing enough damage to a target. Whoa, in the mid lane. The dive on mid lane, not respecting the rotations coming out from Issues Critical. This is gonna crack open the base and crack open they hope to do as GP tries to defend, but it's not gonna be enough. Oriana's gonna be here. Might Jarvan's be gonna be moving out to the side. They might be able to combo something special. But it's going to be the retreat here from Issues Critical as Mordekaiser secures that top side turret. It actually might be enough. You, uh, I know that um, you, I guess I would also think so, that they would be able to get that mid lane tower. But the GP as well as the Orianna at this point in the game, they're looking so good in terms of wave clear. GP is finally level, uh, well, past level 13. So now his barrels are easily reset. Can get barrels off just so incredibly easily. You saw the tick down from that that three point mark, just so incredibly fast at this point. And now GP is finally becoming a champion. He's got the Triforce. He has the Sterics. He's doing so much damage. I want to see if they're actually able to carry this one out because it's still very, very close. Even though it's a 10k lead, there's still the potential of what can become a really good comp. Yeah, you know, it's really that team fight comp that can always come back when you least expect it. And yeah. that's going to be up to Issues Critical to really dissect the team into four squares or whatever they decide that is convenient for them in the time. And that dissection will allow them to really separate targets and isolate them in order to take them out. Mordekaiser is going to be doing a really good job of that because that's really the name of his game. Mm. But for Snowman Slammers, one good team fight is all they need to turn things around. Catching picks is good too, but wasting all like Cataclysm and Oriana Shockwave right. on one target. Oh, wow, that was sick. That was sick. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> Leroy going to recall. He almost dropped some bullets. He was sweating, but making it out alive going to be quite handy. But still, if your issue is critical, you're feeling pretty good. You've got control of about 75% of the map, if you're oh, yeah. going to be honest. And that's going to give you opportunity to so many resources. But like I said, Snowman Slammer is just waiting for that one team fight. That might, and that might give them the advantage. Yeah. Jarvan's got uh He's slowly building towards Triforce now at this point, uh, which is a little bit weird to do. 27 minutes in. Usually want to just get tanky, but... I guess he's kind of one of the big damage sources. He's the one getting in with Cataclysm, so he's looking at himself when he wants to try and do most of this damage. Is Triforce going to be that option? I'm not too sure. We're going to have to see in, in the rest of these fights. But as well, Orianna's kind of sitting in that same position. She needs to start doing a lot more damage with her Orianna ball. I know that a bunch of casters that I cast with, they always say, Wombo Combo at the end of the day is a Wombo Combo. So if, it, if they can get it off, then the effect is going to be insane. But now we get to see the Baron. Uh, animation actually in full effect. Do you think that Oriana's itemization is kind of shooting herself in the foot? Because she have itemized she better game, yeah. um, to essentially do more damage with these shockwaves, or like what could she really build to really go against this team? Ludens. <laughs> like Ludens' first item would have been really nice. Uh, GLP is a, especially for wave clears. Yes, to interrupt, but no, you're like, good. Um, that's gonna create like more opportunity to stay alive, and I think that might Death be the cap. next item, but. No. Uh, you go. You can also see that Vladimir is slowly starting to build his death cap. Vladimir is just a massive champion. Whoa, that was a steal. Lisa is gonna say, be saying, nope, that's my blue buff. Thank you very much. I'm gonna take this tax as you are just a vassal state in my kingdom. <laughs> wow. and that's gonna be Baron here. Four issues critical, not to be contested, but misfortune is looking to peer over the bridge and look into this pit. Popping down one ward and backing away is not the version of looking over the bridge. In fact, it's letting them have the Baron 
for themselves, but now they're realizing the error of their ways. 5,000 HP left, 4,000, now 3,000. The Baron is, is as good as theirs. And they might be looking to try to team fight here, but nope, they're just backing off. And I think Snowman Slammers respecting issues critical a little too much. <laughs> yeah. When you have a Jarvan available for yourself as well as Flash, you, there should be no reason that you're inside the base while the enemy team is doing Baron. The only thing is if the support was really lacking with wards. And I think at this point, I don't know, I don't want to say Tarek's tilted, but he's literally just not doing his job. When it's past 20 minutes and you're versus a team just like this one, where they're just so crazy with getting the objectives, securing them, and then going inside of these lanes. you got to keep your eyes headstrong on this Baron. Make it so that the enemy has to sweep out this pit. Make it so that Lee Sin has to get a sweeper, uh, because obviously he doesn't as well. Um, his, this is his top laner and his mid laner don't have their uh, trinkets upgraded, so you're not playing to your enemy's um, disadvantage. We're going to have to see how Issue is critical, decides to slow out this game. Like I said, Snowman Slammers, the name of their game is to team fight to try to swing this back into their favor. Vladimir securing the very last tier two turret. Now all that remains on this final frontier for Snowman Slammers is these inhibitors. Lee Sin <laughs> playing a little bit of footsie as he hops in and out. Maybe even gonna hop in <laughs> and in and out one more time. One more time. One more time. But the 1-3-1 one, one, going to be absolutely detrimental to Snowman Slammers. They have to answer at least one member, which means the team fight is very difficult to execute. But they may just need to pull the trigger because it'll be too late once you're dead and the Nexus is blown. As Lee Sin is looking to try to get in here. When you're in a 1-3-1, one, one, any chip damage onto a tower is so good. And you're starting to see that here. Oh! Whoa! Oh that was my so god. Sick. But actually, the flash is going to be out for the misfortune. They're going to almost take out Senna in the process. They do. Tarek goes in. That's going to be the one here. One for one here. Tarek gets Senna, but Mordecai takes, takes Jarvan. No, the shockwave whiffs. They whiffed and it. this is going to be the fight of a lifetime. Four issues critical. Vladimir goes no deep. Way. That's going to be the double kill. That's going to be the triple. The Zanya is going to secure. And they're knocking on the doors. They want to close this one out. That's going to be it. It's 31 minutes into this match, and Vladimir really starts to pop off. As well, the ace going to be coming through for the Lee Sin. Just trying to attract all the minions, clear up the base because you guys are packing up and going home. An issue is critical. 24 to 12. They padded up all the KDs. They don't have to dive the fountain for anything. This is going to be it. What started out as a rough game here for Issue is critical. Snowman Slammers had a 4-0 misfortune in the first 10 minutes, but they weren't able to turn it into a lead. Knocking on the Nexus is Issue is critical. They're able to close this out. Jeremy Chu leaves the game. Issue is critical. Takes week four against Snowman Slammers. What a series. What beautiful. a series. Beautiful. That was absolutely nuts. beautiful. Oh, we got to just come down from that one as there was just so much to digest there in that last game. We've got a replay for just a, in a little bit. I want to just touch on something. No, we don't. It's all good. Don't worry about it. No, we're fine. <laughs> Hop we're in fine. right we're in. We're fine. We're just going to jump a replay. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Look at a replay of this team fight. That was so good. The flash as well as the QSS coming through for MF is what saved her initially. But the thing that was really catching me, where is this ball? Where is the ball going to be placed? And it wasn't able to execute the Lee Sin. That was the big thing. So if they were able to execute the Lee Sin, maybe things could have been different, but no. There was a, just, there was a Vladimir in your back line. There was a Vladimir, dude. You gotta look at the Vladimir. And they just weren't able to do it. Also the Proto Belt coming through for Nautilus just to, to deal a little bit of extra damage to that kill. It was really good. All good. This is gonna be one of those things where issues critical new that Snowman Slammers had to engage. They knew it. The 1-3-1 yeah. was going to punish them and say, hey, you're going to need to execute now or never. Yeah. The Lee Sin kick wasn't <coughs> the action item that Snowman Slammers uh, obviously wanted. Mm. Lee Sin was just saying, I'm going to start the fight, but I already know that you were going to lose it. Yeah. Right? Obviously, Issues Critical is going to be comfortable enough to even fight under turret. Their Vladimir is insanely strong. Naros is going to provide the appeal. Lee Sin is going to do what he can. But overall, their team was just insanely strong. They were going to win, I think, the team fight no matter what because they were just that far ahead. But in order to play the chess game, they knew that Snowman Slammers had to engage. Mm. They did it for them and still slapped them up. It was just – there was – 
so much to digest during that whole entire series just because game one was so action-packed. Game two was the same thing, but for the other team. And then we just ended up seeing in, in game three, issues critical. They just pulled out the way better comp. They just, they executed that just literally perfectly. I loved it. Yeah, you have to still commend both teams. You know, Snowman Slammers came in one game one, something a little spicy. They had the Graves jungle, which worked out to quite... Good effect, you know. Jarvan wasn't able to keep up. But the story here today was really the battle of the jungle. Um, the Lee Sin here in this game was able to be everywhere that the Jarvan was not. And I know that the Jarvan was, was picked to kind of cater to this team fight comp. But really, I think kind of the MVP should go to the jungler for issue is critical. Everyone pulled their weight, but it really was the jungler that made it shine. In, in a lot of games, it's better jungler wins, and I think that definitely in this series it was. Uh, in a lot of League of Legends, it is. But we saw the impact that it had. The itemization. We were talking a whole lot. We talked a lot about items. The Triforce at the end of the game for Jarvan was not it. That was just very far from it. Maybe even the Jarvan yeah. pick could have been swapped out for something else. The Taric pick as well. We were talking about that. But there's just there was a lot. And I think that both teams played well. Both teams have something to go back and review because they both had issues, but they both had positives. And they could take a lot away from this series. Yeah. We have to obviously commend both teams. Congratulations. 100% goes to Issues Critical. Putting on a show for you guys here on Tuesday evening. We're going to wrap it up here on the broadcast. Really want to give a big shout-out to our production team. We obviously did hear a couple of things in the chat about the FOV, those types we of things. We we're just trying to try something new. We're trying to create an amazing experience for you sure. guys. So we appreciate that you're patient, um, that you're giving us feedback. We're obviously taking it critically, and we're trying to apply it live as best as we can. Um, but big shout-out to our production staff, putting on an absolute phenomenal show. Crispy with the replays and amazing with the picture-in-picture. Picture. And obviously, shout-out to us. Thank you guys as well for coming. Yeah. Um, for staying with us for this kind of long, drawn-out best of three, but still action-packed. We're going to sign off here. Thank you guys for coming. We'll see you guys next week with more Upsurge Premier League action.